Very good. And then we are going to go ahead and share screen here and uh, get this party started. Let's go ahead and we'll share this little link right here and then we'll go right here. And all right, so everybody should be able to see the workbook right now. Can everybody see that? Your True Life Workbook. Yes. All right, super fantastic. You are going to have this workbook afterwards. I'm going to be posting it on the asset page. Um, however, you won't be, it's not typable. So there's no use in me rushing to get it to you before the web, but after the web, you are going to receive this workbook. And this is what we are going to be going through tonight. I'm not, you are gonna, I am gonna skip some pages because some of it is not what I want to present, but for you to be able to follow up later. And um, because I want you guys, if you, one thing, if you are just new to meeting me, I give an extensive amount of value and everything that I do so I can make sure that when you leave me, that you at least have the first steps to be able to really attract the dream life. When my true self uh, whispered down to me and said, Nasa, you need to do a true life web for your best life. I said, well, you know, I'm, I haven't achieved everything that I wanted to achieve. And I had to look back and spirit said, uh-uh, what were you thinking about two years ago? What were you thinking about a year ago? And I was like, I am living my dream. I'm living everything that I wanted to be able to live. Um, I have freed myself from an oppressive relationship, an oppressive, toxic relationship. I've achieved the body that I want, the health that I want. I really am living my dream life. And now I'm dreaming some new dreams. And when you're dreaming a new dream, sometimes you can get out of gratitude and not appreciate. So I loved putting this guidebook together because it allowed me to revisit the strategies that got me to where I am. Now, interestingly enough, most healers, uh, teach from, you know, oh, this is what I did to get better. So let me teach you. Well, a lot of times that's not relatable. And so for me, I wanted to find out the scientific ways of why I, what I was doing. Yes, I was meditating. Yes, I was doing this. So what I teach you is what I have tried. And then I go find the science behind it or the metaphysics behind it. And that's what I teach you. So everything in here I have done, everything in here is how I build my practice and how I work with my clients. And I'm so glad to see so many of you guys here again to keep learning. And that should tell you something. If you are just joining and this is the first web that you have had for me, can you just shout out in the chat if I have uh, done a reading for you, or if you have been through one of my coaching programs, and just really just raise your hand so you can uh, so people can see. Because I think the testament is when people that you have worked for, worked with, keep showing up over and over again. And I don't want to be this way. For about twenty minutes, I'm gonna talk at you because I need you to understand who you are. I need you to understand what you're made of because. When I figured this out, I realized how incredibly powerful I am. And that is what has given me the courage to be able to make sure I don't give up and I move forward, okay? So I'm going to talk to you about who you are. And then I'm gonna talk to you about why it's so hard to change. Because here right now, we have 18 people on. I know you guys have been trying because I've been there. I've tried this over and over again, or maybe you have the knowledge. And so many of the things that I'm going to talk about today, you're like, oh, I heard that before. Why can't I change? And so sometimes this even causes us a level of depression and concern and brings us down to a low spot because we can't understand why I can't get past this point. And so in addition to me telling you who you are, I'm going to make you just 
be okay. So you can just have a little self-forgiveness for yourself because there's a lot of boundaries and a lot of limits and things that we don't understand that keep us stuck. So I'm gonna talk at you for about 20 minutes. And then for the rest of this workshop, we're gonna be working together. We're going to be trying some of these beautiful things to be able to uh, practice it together in community, all right? So that's why I'm super excited about this. So my name is Elagre Nasaret Bawa. I am a certified life coach because unlike many other healers that you may uh, work with, I wanted to get the proper training. Yes, I have natural abilities to be able to help people. I have natural abilities because I'm a medium, not an intuitive person, a reader. I'm a medium. And so even I needed to understand that. How can I hear these voices? Why am I seeing things? And why am I having these experiences? And you shall know that based off of recent studies now, this is a part of who we are. And so everybody on this phone, on this Zoom today, has the ability to create and become exactly what I'm doing. And you should know, as an Orisha priest, which I also am, three of my readings from Baba Laos and, and very talented and well-known Yanifas told me that I am here to make Orisha. So first of all, just know that if you are attracted to me, you royal, hun. Bing, bang, boom. You are a healer yourself. You are a guide yourself. You are going to learn this information. And then I'm not stingy because ain't none of this new. I just gathered it together. I didn't make up a lot of this information. So many of my past students use my academy information to teach other people. And I'm totally okay with that because I am here to build an army. So first of all, if you are here today, just know that you are royalty and you are meant for greatness, okay? That is what you are made for. So in addition to being a medium, a certified life coach, I'm also a certified acupressure specialist. I am trained in hypnosis. Um, I have so many things that I have learned from other people to be able to share it with you so that you can achieve these results. But honestly, with everything that I've learned and everything that I've paid for and all of these different you know, letters that I've paid for after my name so that I can make sure that I know what I'm doing, I am most proud about how I have changed my life. Here is me, and this, I will say, was not even at my biggest. I was trying to go back and look at some pictures and, and go through some albums to see if I could find some other photos, but at my largest weight, I was 265 pounds. Additionally, I was in a very unhappy marriage. I was in a high power job that made me miserable. And this is how I lived for over 20 years, not having any hope, not understanding why I just couldn't be freaking happy. Why can I not be happy? And then finally, in my early 30s, I decided to medicate myself. So I went to the doctor, or to Kaiser, and I told them what my challenges were. And they put me on three uh, mood altering drugs. I was on, um, they gave me Xanax. I had Lamotrigine and I was on Buspar. And then for a little bit, I was on a drug called Wilbutrin. And I needed all of these drugs in order to be able to get through life option. And then for me, my gateway was the ancestors. The ancestors saved my life. And eventually when I started doing some of the things before I even knew really why these things worked, I, all of a sudden I was sitting here, first of all, when the job laid me off in 2020, I noticed after that job passed and I was here and I was relaxed and you know I was starting to work on more deeply and turning this business from a hobby to a ministry, I noticed I had been home for three weeks and I no longer needed the medication. I was like, oh, I didn't take, I didn't take my medication. And then I took the medication and it made me sick. So I went to the doctor and the doctor said, well, maybe you're in remission. So she uh, worked with me for about three months. And I am so happy to tell you that I have not taken any pharmaceutical drugs 
to maintain my mood uh, since late 2020, since December 2020. And so I'm so excited about that. So even if you are on mood enhancing drugs to be able to get through the light, get through the day, just know that some of these things can help you as well. You wanna do what I did, work with your doctor, but the medicine will tell you when it's not working anymore because you'll forget to take it or it'll begin to make you sick. But make sure that you do get medical help to get off of these drugs. These drugs are extremely dangerous, okay? But these are wonderful ways. I also supplement with different herbs like ashwagandha, I am 30 days off cannabis. I did use cannabis to help me be able to uh, help me manage my mood as well because I wanted to move towards natural remedies. But now even about I'm four to six weeks off of cannabis and I feel fantastic. And so if you are overweight, if you have poor health, and if you are also on mood altering drugs that you don't want to be on or your children are on, you are in the right way because definitely you can be set free. So I'm so excited about how I turned my life and I put my high school picture up there because I literally am smaller than I was in high school. And also I feel like, you know, I look pretty good too. I look even better than I did in high school. And it wasn't because I was in the gym killing myself. And it wasn't because I was penny pinching and watching every single diet in order for me to be able to eat. It was because of the strategies that I am going to give you today. So if you are struggling with your weight, no problem. These strategies can help you get there if you do them and if you are disciplined, all right? So again, I am basically just going through this workbook, which you will receive after the web. This workbook is filled with so many things that I'm not even going to talk about tonight during this web, but so many things that you can be able to pace yourself and take your time. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about some things about how I can support you if you would like to work with me one on one. Again, many of my past clients are on the web today and they can be able to communicate with you the different changes that they have been able to experience because of this information that I have shared, okay? So what are we going to cover tonight? First of all, we're going to talk about who you really are. This is the most frustrating thing for me as a guide. I don't like to call myself a healer anymore because I, I ain't healing nothing, okay? I'm just here as a guide to help you, usher you so you can heal yourself, all right? But you need to understand what makes you you so you can know how powerful you are. Then we're going to talk about some universal laws. Here's the thing. We get so caught up on physicality that we don't realize that this universe actually has certain laws. And the more that we align with those laws, the more our lives can begin to flourish. There are over 50 universal laws. However, I'm going to introduce you to 12 and talk about the most important two that will help you be able to manifest your dream life. If you don't know the other 10 to 40, it doesn't matter. If you know these two, you are on your way to be able to manifest your dream life. And then you need to know the body, that the energy, great Oludumari, if you call it the universe, God, whatever you want to call your creator, I want to tell you the equipment that they gave us to be able to operate seamlessly within those universal laws. I have goosebumps right now, honestly, because we are so sophisticated. We are the most sophisticated machine that this universe has on this planet. And you need to know that so you can understand the powerful creator that you are. And then you need to understand that you came, this body that you're in came with some programming. That's a little bit of a hiccup. And there's two types of programming that really get in the way of being able to manifest our greatest life. And that is what I want for all 22 people on this call. I want you to be able to manifest your greatest life, not a good life, not, yeah, I'm happy. I want y'all to manifest your greatest life. And you can do that when you can understand how you're programmed. 
I'm gonna tell you how thoughts become things. That's super important for you to know. And then we are going to go through the eight habits together, working as a team. So if you already are not in a quiet place, if you already don't have a notebook for you to write in, go ahead and do that. Listen to me, put your headphones, walk around, do what you must. But when we get into those eight habits, we are going to be working together as a group to walk through these strategies so that you can be able to manifest your life, all right? And then I'll open up for questions. All right, so to get the most out of this workbook when you are doing it on your own, consistency, consistency, consistency. You're gonna find how important repetition is to reprogramming the body. Repetition is your most important tool that you have in your ascension. And I even have some tools to be able to help you. All right. So just be patient and use social support. I have, I hope you guys uh, kind of love on each other in the chat and maybe you could create your own tribe, but I have some things that can help you be able to have that support as well. And here's the most important thing. Spirituality is confusing and it's confusing because spirituality is like a fingerprint. We are not all from the same places. I'm not gonna go deep in that because y'all might not be ready for that. But we're not all from the same places. We're not all made up of the same thing as far as our energy system is concerned. And so when you're getting all of these spiritual things out there, you know, you gotta figure out what resonates with you and then put a soup together to let you be able to live your life. But this is why spirituality is confusing because there are, many strategies that can help you ascend. One of my business partners, she ascended through twerking. One of my business partners, she ascended by building community and connecting. So it just depends on what your soul's journey is. And that is why spirituality is your business. The most important thing you will know is that when you start operating in strategies, the haters is going to come out. Your mom and them, your cousin and them, all of them going to be looking at you crazy. But here's what I can tell you, that seven years in this game, my family is now calling me. Can I have um, can I have a class? Can I have a reading? Can I have this? The same people who side-eyed side -eyed me and looked at me crazy. So spirituality is your damn business. That's the first thing I want you to write down on whatever paper you're using. Spirituality is my business. And it really, really is. So you don't have to run and tell everybody what you're doing. All you need to do is change, honey. You just need to change and the questions will start to flow. All right. So don't worry about what other people have to say because you have to experience this. All right, so first of all, the most important thing that I always like people to know is that you are not what you think you are. So many times when we are looking in the mirror and we see a physical body, we believe that that is all that we are. We're so many things. First of all, this is I'm not going to talk about this in wet in the web, but there are 35 stages to the soul and nine layers to the soul. Now, as far as your self is concerned, the physical self, the self that is manifesting in this world, most guides and healers and practitioners will agree that there are five parts of you that you need to understand. And each one of these things have to be in alignment and they have to be monitored and nurtured in order to feel like that you are manifesting your, your best life. The first thing you need to know is that you are a soul. I just did a live web earlier this week. We get so caught up into this lifetime shit. This is this lifetime. I mean, what's going on in this lifetime? Do you know you might be 10,000 years old? You, this might be your 30th lifetime. And so if you are totally attached to the wisdom that you are seeking in this world, you have a minuscule of the information that you are. You are an ancient soul. That is your prime identity that is looking to express itself. And the great thing about understanding universal law is that the soul will just keep coming back until it expresses everything that it wants to express. How about we express that in this life? How about we do that in this life? Ah, you know, I love earth. Earth is in my seventh house, okay? I come here whenever big changes need to be made. So I love this place. But, you know, 
there's lots of other places to go and I don't need to come back here. So if this can be the time where we all can work together as a tribe to get people to awaken to the true self and to be able to manifest their greatness because that is how the soul transitions off this planet. It gets to express. I expressed everything, honey. I found my divine lover. I worked out all my karma. I created everything that I wanted to create. And now I can move on to something greater. You are primarily a soul, baby. You are not a person. You ain't black. You ain't white. You are not what you look in the mirror. You are an ancient energy soul. And you need to know that. The second thing is you have consciousness. I'm going to talk about this, but this is the one thing that separates us from other animals on this planet. We have frontal lobe consciousness. We don't use it, but we have it. That frontal lobe consciousness, I always like to say that is your God consciousness. That is your connection to the other, to the other realm. That is what makes you a God because you have the ability to create something fantastic. And when I break down this body and all of the chemicals and the things that help you manifest you, you're going to be like, what the hell? Because animals in nature, they don't have the same creation power that we, that's why they're in order. They do what they're supposed to do. They just follow the code. But we don't have to follow the code. We have the ability to be able to use our minds to create whatever we want. And I'm going to tell you how the universe equipped us to be able to do that. You do have this physical self, which I always call the spaceship for the energy being, right? For the soul. The body is just a spaceship for the soul. And it is a sophisticated spaceship, honey. Microsoft right now is downloading people's DNA code onto the computer and putting them in robots. Are you kidding me? This ain't even no woo-woo science. Look it up, okay? That's what they are doing. That's how powerful you are, okay? So we need to make sure that we are taking care of our physical self. We are an emotional being. And actually our feelings is really what the universe gave us to be able to create. So anybody on this web that is numbing themselves and you are trying to avoid pain because you don't want to be hurt, let me tell you, you're going to live a half life. That is not what you are here to do. You are here to feel. You are here to do everything. The soul does not care about your discomfort. Please write that down on your paper. My soul does not care about my discomfort. And so we're going to talk about how we can cleanse out our emotions and use them for our greater good. And then you have a divine self, that part of you that was picked straight out of dark matter to come down into this planet. You are a spiritual self. This is your authentic self. This is your unconditioned self. This is the person that can love unconditionally, understand that whether good luck or bad luck is all for me, honey. I don't know if you guys have seen this new Disney Pixar. I think it's a Pixar movie called Luck. Please watch it. It's kind of corny but it really has this great message in there about how even bad luck leads you to greatness. Last year, I, or earlier this year, I started to uh, experience some financial hardship. But because I experienced that financial hardship, it opened up to other partners that I would not have sought out had the money been flowing in. So what I would deem as bad luck introduced me to a new best friend, introduced me to a new position in which I'm helping to grow this wonderful community with Honeypot Energy and Art Center here in Atlanta. Bad luck led me to greatness. So we have to understand that when we are experiencing discomfort, that is just the body's way of telling you that you're off. You're off. And you need to check in with the higher self to do something different. So you are a spiritual being as well, Ashe. All right, so let's get into these 12 universal laws. And these are, again, in the workbook, so don't feel like you have to take a lot of notes. I want you to really use your paper for the different exercises that we're going to be doing tonight. But here's the 12 universal laws. The first law is divine oneness. Everything is connected. This is why sometimes when I'm in a meditation, I can push things. This is why I can use the energy in my hands to be able to clear. This is why we can telepathically communicate with each other because we really all come from one dark matter, one womb. Even quantum physicist Stephen Hawkins tells us that, yeah, everything comes from dark matter. Dark matter is the one that's creating this. 
So even science is catching up with what we know. In African tradition, we call o Olodumare. And Olodumare is an illusion of the dark womb, Ashe. So even our ancient African ancestors knew exactly what was going on, Ashe. The law of vibration. This is the missing link that we didn't quite understand when the secret and everything, they put hyper-focused on the law of attraction, but the law of attraction is actually a secondary law. And this is what we're gonna talk about tonight, the law of vibration and the law of attraction. The law of vibration says that everything has a unique vibrational frequency. A rock is not just a rock. If you have special cameras, you will be able to see everything in this world vibrates. So what we think is actually, or thought was inanimate is actually vibrating and connecting. This is why you could sit on a rock and be able to get the energy of stability or go to the grass and feel the energy of grounding because even the blades of grass, honey, is vibrating. If you guys watch Wednesdays with Odu, you'll see Baba Shola always says that, you know, uh, when we came out of Olodumare or out of the dark womb, everything decided what it was going to be. I'm going to be a blade of grass. I'm going to be a human. I'm going to be a rock. I'm going to be a part of the ocean. Everything decided. Everything is coming from this one place and it's vibrating. Then we have the law of attraction. This is why many of us are not manifesting because we have a lot of vibrational debris and I'm going to show you that. But here's the thing, what is like unto itself is drawn. So there's everything that you bring into you is you. This is the hardest part that we have to accept when you are coming into spiritual and universal law that everything that you draw to you is in you, good, bad, or ugly. I always talk about the law of mirroring. The law of mirroring says that whatever, whenever you are meeting a person, you are actually meeting yourself. So even people, when you call them narcissists, you need to look and see what you may have inside of you. If you're calling someone selfish, you need to see what you have inside of you. If you think that you're catching bad dudes or raggedy chicks, I'm not going to even finish that sentence, okay? The uh, what is like unto itself draws into itself. We have the law of correspondence, as above, so below. Again, that goes, plays off of that law of mirroring. We live in this very much parallel world. The law of action, manifesting requires aligned action. We're going to talk about how we work through that. The law of cause and effect, every action has a consequence. Everything you do, there is nothing that you do that doesn't make something else happen either energetically or actually physically makes it happen. That's why we have to be really careful about what we're putting out into the world. The law of compensation. We are rewarded for right action. When you are in alignment and you are operating in the 16 principles of good character and you're not necessarily striving to get X and get Y, but you are striving for character, let me tell you something. The universe will start throwing stuff at you. Yeah, I know you. Mm -hmm. Come on with it. The law of compensation is beautiful. The law of per perpetual transmutation of energy. Energy is always moving and always changing. Always moving and always changing. Right now, our DNA code and our energy system is being upgraded because of things that are going on in the stars. The law of relativity. Everything is what it is. Everything is relative. Everything is important. This idea that this ain't real and that ain't real, the moment that the mind conceives it, it is so. The law of polarity. There are two sides to everything. This is where uh, feminine and masculine energy becomes super, super important. Right now, there's this whole narrative about how women are too masculine. While I may agree that a lot of women are operating in their masculinity, the law of polarity would say the more masculine women it is, the more feminine men it is. It just is what it is. So I love it when men are like, ugh, these women so masculine. I already know that if you are attracting masculine women, you are a feminine man. And so that's why we as women, if we want a masculine man that's a provider, we must slide into our feminine energy because as long as we are in our masculine energy, we will draw feminine men that can't provide for us, can't love us properly, and can't do that. Likewise, men, if you really desire a nurturing and a feminine woman, you need to work on your masculine characters. That's what law of polarity says. Don't blame me, blame the universal law. The law of rhythm. 
nothing is permanent. And this is something that the universe had to really deal with me because I was always crying a few months ago, like, I just want stability. The universe and my higher self was like, what, what, what in this world is going to give you stability, Nas? Why are you so chasing stability and this thing in your idea of foundation? What in this world is permanent? There's nothing in this world that's permanent. So we need to change our ideas about what that means. And finally, the law of gender. Manifestation requires balance of energies. This is why every man and every woman on this call, you need to understand you are both feminine energy and you are both masculine energy. And the goal is to balance those two energies. And the more that you balance those energies, what does that mean balance? Because this is not a divine feminine, divine masculine web. That means that I know when I need to be in my creative flow and when I need to be in my building flow. If you are too much in your creative flow, you won't be able to manifest. If you are too much manifesting, you're gonna be working hard trying to turn matter into matter and it's gonna be difficult. If you want effortless manifestation, some of the things that come to me and the way that it comes to me, it's so weird. Like for instance, let's talk about my teacher, Yeye Louisa Teach. When I first came into this tradition seven years or so ago, her, she was the first exposure that I had to this tradition on YouTube. She was telling a story about Oshun. And I remember my higher self implanting in me, that's gonna be your teacher. And I was like, oh, okay. Now it took a long time for it to manifest. And she even laughed. She was like, oh, you waited a long time for me. But let me tell you how she became my teacher. I did not pursue it. I didn't go after. I had sent her an email maybe about four years ago and she never responded, okay? And then one day I was sitting at my computer and something came in that said Elay meeting. I was like, Elay meeting? What is this? And I was looking for a house. I was like, all right, well, I don't know who it is. I almost didn't even go. So I clicked on it because it didn't come from Ye Ye. It came from her, uh, somebody in the Elay. And I clicked on it. And here's this beautiful Alafia. I was like, oh, what? And now, you know, her and I are building this beautiful uh, relationship. She is a fantastic teacher. And now I have a home. It came to me effortlessly. I didn't have to work for it. And these are how things, even my weight, I didn't work crazy for it. I didn't kill myself in a gym. I didn't count calories. The more I aligned my energy, honestly, I just started losing the taste for things and I started craving other things and the weight melted off of me like butter. And people don't like to hear that, but this web will help you get that weight off like butter. So now let's go deeper into the law of vibration because this is a manifestation web. That's what we're here for. All of those universal laws, please study them, look into them, learn how to master them. But the two that's gonna get you your stuff, Ashe, is the law of vibration and the law of attraction. The law of vibration states that everything in the universe is in a constant state of motion. We refer to these movements as a vibration. And the speed of rate at which it vibrates is called a frequency. The only difference between one object and another is the rate of vibration. And we learned this in science, right? We learned that the only difference between energy that we can see and energy that we can that we have to perceive is the rate of which it moves. I don't know why we forgot. And we learned this in elementary school. And guess what? In the body, the thing that puts out the highest vibration is thoughts and emotions, our thoughts like everything else in the universe, it's energy. It's a frequency, Ashe. And they vibrate at different frequencies depending on the nature of the thought. Our thoughts are cosmic waves that are powerful and they penetrate all of space and all of time. This is universal law, honey. And so we have to understand how we control our vibration. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The primary law is that attraction state. So the law of attraction focuses on how you are specifically using your thoughts and feelings to dictate what you attract in your life. Attraction is a force acting mutually. And so that's why many people, the law of attraction hasn't been working for them because the law of attraction is focused on, oh, just think this thing and say this thing. But no, baby, you got to feel it. 
You got to think it, you got to say it, and then you have to be able to feel it in your body. When you feel it in your body, that's how you vibrate. So you could be saying all you want. You could be doing love affirmations till you blue in the face, honey doll. But if your vibration has vibrational debris that says, you know, all dudes is this, all women is this, I'm scared of love, ain't nobody coming to you. The only people that's going to come to you are lessons. Lessons or blessings, okay? And so that's what the law of attraction and the law of vibration, we have to understand that these two things have to work in tandem in order for effortless manifestation. Now, here is something good for you to know. You're going to get what you want, but you might have to do it over two or three lifetimes if you don't master this information. All right, so how do these things work to manifest. The law of vibration is always looking to match up people, match up things and experiences that are to your vibration. So when you feel grateful and you maintain a feeling of gratefulness, you raise to a gratefulness um, uh, frequency. And then the law of attraction starts taking over and bringing things to you. Likewise, if you feel anxious and you live with a lot of fear, frustration, and anger, your vibration is not a match with peace and joy. So they're exact. So that's what you're going to draw to you. Frustrating partners, frustrating drops, frustrating traffic situations, frustrating people at the mall, frustrating people at the grocery store. That is what you are going to attract. So the great news is that you can choose what vibration that you decide to live in. It takes work, though, because these laws don't take in consideration all of the vibrational debris that we have accumulated because we have not lived properly on this earth. So before I go into your spiritual anatomy, I know I said a life full. I'm gonna go into the chat really quick and see if we have any uh, questions. Oh, look, yes, isn't that's a great movie. You guys really have to see that. I love it, all right? Okay, so no questions. Very good. All right, dear, be as present as you can. No worries, that is fine. And you will be able to get the replay and do some of these things on your own. All right, so now that I talked to you about the laws, it is important for you to understand the equipment that you were given to help you master these things. Because as long as you look in the mirror and you just see a physical body and you don't understand who you are, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to manifest the life that you want to be able to manifest. Now, I have a new academy, and I'm going to talk about that a little later, called an Al Alignment Academy, where I am going to go in depth into all parts of your energy system. That ain't what this is, right? This is about manifestation. But I wanted you to be able to at least be able to see all of the parts that make you you. I like to call this, this is the true you. This is your equipment that helps you operate in universal law. So you, number one, you have an auric field that's made up of 12 layers. You also have, there are over 140 or more chakras all throughout the body, but there are 12 that we really need to be super hyper-focused on, which is why in Alignment Academy, that's what we do. We focus on the excuse me, the 12 chakra system, because you need to know what each one of these systems do in order to help this spaceship be able to operate within these universal laws. So you have 12 chakras and these are spinning wheels. And each one of these chakras are responsible for different things. So if you are having problems believing in yourself and you're having problems being able to manifest things, primarily that's gonna be in your root chakra. If you are having sexual issues, if, if you're frigid or, you know, you don't you're having some things down there with your creativity and flow, with your ability to connect with others, that's going to be your second chakra. Your third chakra has to do with who you are and your beingness and who you present to the world, your mentality, your structure, that's your energy. 
The fourth chakra is the heart chakra. And that's the bridge between the lower chakras and the heart. I like to say that's your little compass that tells you what you need to do. But so many times we have a corruptible heart. Our heart's sad, we're depressed, we're holding on to things, or maybe we've numbed ourselves. The heart can't help you when it's like that. But that's your healing, that's your connection. And the heart chakra is one of the few chakras that actually has two different colors. First, it operates on a self-love with pink, and then it operates on abundance and connecting with everybody on the green level. So we'll talk more about that in Alignment Academy. Your fifth chakra, which is actually your communication center, your throat chakra. And there's also a little chakra behind your tongue that I'm not mentioning here called your bendy chakra. And your bendy chakra, I like to say that's that ink for the pen to make everything happen that you're expressing. Then we have our spirituality and our purpose. That is that third eye. That's we really need to be tapped in, tuned in to that. Then you have your uh, seventh chakra, which connects you to like your spirituality and purpose. And then there's five additional chakras that open up once you start opening up that kundalini energy honey and all you got all them things lit up then you start getting to, into mysticism with the eighth chakra the ninth chakra with har harmony nature and dealing with the ancestors and being connected with the tenth chakra the eleventh chakra is being able to command forces this is how you see in people moving water and up uh, and 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 manipulating birds and doing really strange things like that that's really you into your 11th chakra and then the 12th chakra that is when the higher self begins to actually take control of the spaceship and then that's when you are rock and rolling honey when you open up that 12th chakra in addition to that you have meridian lines that run all through your body this is what uh, i focus on on acupressure and also acupuncture different things like that you're focusing specifically on these meridians and these meridians are connected to different organs within your body this is like the nervous the energy systems nervous system so you know all of the veins and things that run through your physical body this is the energy's body's veins that runs through and it all is in charge of something so i could be dealing with one specific meridian and it can help release from headache it can help you release from worry it can help you release from stress so this is why i love acupressure and i'm loving that i'm now offering this service to people and then that ain't it you got 72 nadis the nadis are actually additional that's our flow centers that allow, it's almost like your um, energy blood, I would like to say. It's, that's why we call this the rivers of the body because the Nadis act like your energy body's bloodstream, okay? The things that be able to move everything through these chakras and through these energy systems. And again, we're gonna learn about all of these during the, uh, the Alignment Academy. All right, so Darren, hold your questions for one second and then I'll definitely go ahead and get you out love that. All right, so let's talk about what are the main blockers to this system that we have, this sophisticated system. Number one, negative emotions, disempowering thoughts and beliefs, poor health, not eating the right foods, a lack that you are, of awareness that you are a spiritual body and that we live in a spiritual system. The skeptics, always are going to have lots of health problems and they're going to be extremely stressed out because if you think that you are only matter here to manipulate matter life is going to be hard for you and then ancestral trauma that lies within our dna code all right so uh, if uh, darren if you would like to unmute yourself or you can ask your question in the chat you can go ahead and do that now Yeah, that was, that was interesting for us, the part of the tapping in part. I never knew you could do all that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's why I wanted to do this web because it's not, if we don't know what a sophisticated energy system that we have, we will rely too much on the matter. Right. 
All right, so um, I wanted to put some testimonials throughout the workbook so you can be able to know what it is like working with me and so that you can, Darren, go ahead and uh, mute yourself again so we can uh, save that feedback. Thank you, my love. Um, Darren's one of uh, a new uh, person that I'm working with, and I love that I'm working with the masculines because, you know, we, we got to get the work to bring these genders together. So I love that. But here is one of my students right here. She, um, Latasha Lathan, you may know her as Holistic Diva. When she first came to me, hold on one second, let me go ahead and mute the lines again. Mute all. There we go. When she first came to me, she was having some struggles with her family. She was feeling kind of downtrodden and her health, she was struggling with that. And now after working with me, she is actually one of my longest clients. And now she's more of a partner now. So remember I told you, that I'm here to make Arisha. So she's starting her practice. She actually was able to set herself free from her nine to five. And now her and her husband are working on with the nonprofit. They've opened a concession stand. Like her life has significantly changed. And by her own words, she will tell you that it was because of the work that we are doing. So I don't know if she's on or not, but if you are, please go ahead and give your little testimonial in the chat. All right, so before we get into these eight habits, it's important to, for us to understand and have a little forgiveness for ourselves. Because the hardest thing that it was for me is, why do I have all of this knowledge, but I am still struggling to live a happy life? What the F is going on? I know better, why am I still struggling? And then a year ago, by me asking that very question, then spirit said to me, baby girl, I want you to study a little epigenetics. And so as I started studying epigenetics and learning about this information, I was kind of pissed off. I was like, are you kidding me? And so I'm so proud to present this information to you because this is going to be the number one reason why you aren't able to manifest. <coughs> Excuse me, if you have children, I want this. I want you to also be thinking about your children. Let me turn this diffuser off. I feel the smoke getting into my throat. Sorry, guys. Very good. So let's talk about how we are programmed because we don't understand that when we come down to this planet, we already have some preconceived things that we have to work through. So primarily, Remember when we were learning, we learned about the difference between, um, you know, the scientists were arguing, is it environment or genetics? Which one is it? Environment or genetics that helps us? Well, after much research, the scientists have discovered that it's both. So both are DNA code and also through epigenetics, which I'm going to talk about in a second, it creates a paradigm. And a paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And almost all behaviors are habitual. And so both our DNA code and our experiencing through epigenetics actually creates these habitual behaviors. So let's first talk about our DNA code. Right now, uh, quantum biology and the study of DNA is letting us know that our DNA is actually a memory. And you don't only come in with the characteristics of what you look like and all of this, you're coming in with 20 to 50 generations of information. That includes the good, the bad, and the ugly through trauma. So let's talk about people in the diaspora. Most of you on this call are indigenous, or you came over in the diaspora, one or the other, most of us are. So if you were removed by force from your ancestral land, if you had a systematic separation of gender, systematic oppression, Jim Crow, post-traumatic, that's your grandmom and them, they went through all of that. That trauma, you read the body, the, uh, read the book, um, Your Body Keeps the Score, Ashe, because this book will teach you about how trauma actually 
physiologically changes your DNA. And because we are operating as carbon beings, every time your grandmama had an issue or your granddaddy had an issue or trauma, then that was passed on in the DNA code. So you could live a really great life. They did this study, they didn't study us, okay? But they did this study off of Holocaust survivors. And what they saw is that descendants from the Holocaust survivors who seemingly pretty much had a good life and were not, but they were still struggling with high levels of fear, high levels of depression, high levels of drug use. And this is what caused the study, like what's going on? So all of this comes down into our parents, emotional unavailability, alcoholism, physical abuse, repressed anger, doormatness, right? Emotional abuse, untreated mental illness, codependency, and toxic partnering. Guess what? Then that come on down to us. And now we're in people pleasing. We confused about who we are. We have all of these eating disorders, depression, anxiety, drug depression. And let me tell you, we need to stop it with us. This is why I love working with women before they have children or men too, because it's in your sperm. So the more that we recode our DNA because we have the ability to do that, and that's what epigenetics shows us, which we're gonna look at on the next slide. Epigenetics tells us that we have the ability to change this. But if you haven't been doing some of the things that we're gonna talk about today, Literally, you are programmed with 20 to 50 generations of trauma. And this is why many of the things are affecting you. Now you add on to epigenetics, which is an emerging uh, research that says that our environment is actually changing our DNA code. And so that becomes an issue if you had a very poor upbringing. What do I mean? So they have this study called the ACE test. And this is gonna be our first exercise where everybody's gonna take this ACE test because I want you to see the level of trauma that is affecting your paradigm, that is affecting your subconscious, which then affects your behaviors. Now the adverse childhood experience test, and I give these, I've given these on a couple of lives before, this will really tell you the amount of trauma that you're holding within your physiology. And that trauma is affecting the decisions that you make. It's why you're speaking negative to yourself and why you can't. It's why you're procrastinating. Many of this is because of, the, of your adverse childhood experience, okay? Very fascinating. This changed my life. Now, there are three types of ACE. There is physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. There is physical and emotional neglect, household dysfunction. If you had a parent that was dealing with mental illness, if your mother treated you violently, I, I've talked to so many men now in my, that are coming to me and I hear their mother stories and how their mothers just treated them so poorly, were very verbally abusive. All of that is affecting how they're, look, we beat up on these men, women, like they superhuman. Th these men had the same raggedy mamas that we had, the same raggedy daddies that we had. And we shouldn't look at them as non-humans like they aren't being affected by the same trauma. That's why the finger pointing is so frustrating for me as a woman, because I'm like, we all suffered. We all had the same issue. And this is what's leading to incarceration, substance abuse, and to divorce Ashe, okay? So we have to really look and see how these things, I always like to say their drama is our trauma. So let's go ahead and let's do our first exercise. And you can, uh, I want y'all to even, I give this to now my friends, I'll be like, let's take the score and see, because I like to know what, what other people are working with. I can tell you that my score on here, I had to pat myself on the back that I came as much as I have. So let's go ahead and take this test together. Go ahead and I want you to just put down a number one by each one of these questions, all right? Ready? Let's go. Did a parent or other adult in the household often swear at you, insult you, put you down or humiliate you? Act in a way that made you afraid that you might be physically hurt. I grew up in an extremely verbally abusive household. My grandmother had very few nice things to say to me when she was raising me, okay? So I haven't put it one by there. 
Number two, did a parent or other adult in the household often push, grab, slap, or throw something at you or even hit you so hard that you had marks or were injured? Most of us in a diaspora, if you didn't hit by a switch, I got a belt buckle um, uh, little mark on the side right here. But when my mama uh, uh, gave me a nice little whooping. Number three, did an adult or person at least five years or older than you ever touch or fondle you? Have you uh, touched their body in a sexual way or attempt or actually have oral, anal, or vaginal intercourse with you? Unfortunately, this was a part of my story as well, my childhood. Number four, did you often feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special? Um, your family didn't look out for uh, each other, feel close to each other, or support one another. Put a point down for that if you experience that. Number five, did you often feel that you didn't have enough to eat, had to wear dirty clothes, and had no one to protect you, or your parents were too drunk or high to take care of you or take you to the doctor if you needed? A little part of my life was like that. And then I went to go live with my grandmother and at least that part did improve. I will say that, you gotta give her credit for that. Number six, were your parents ever separated or divorced? I'm divorced and I'm really hyper-focused on this with my children. Number seven, were any of your parents or other adult caregivers often pushed, were they uh, them like so if you had domestic violence and you saw your mom and daddy fighting or all of that kind of stuff go ahead and put a mark there number eight did you live with anyone who was a problem drinker an alcoholic or who used street drugs number nine was a household member depressed or mentally ill or did a household member attempt suicide and number 10, did a household member go to prison? I'm telling you, I have nine out of 10 traumas. <laughs> it's amazing that I'm still, I'm, I'm, I haven't taken myself out, okay? I don't know, it's, it's amazing. But two of my, my grandmother and my great grandmother on my paternal side, here's some more data. I'm not gonna go over that. You can look at that when you uh, get your workbook and you can be able to look at that. But all of those traumas affected me. That's why I had the extra weight. That's why I was in a toxic relationship who, and ironically, I married a person who was extremely verbally abusive. And so I married my grandmother, okay? So you can look and see and look at your spouse and be like, God dang it, I didn't marry my such and such. Most of the time we do because of our program. Now, here's the interesting thing. I want, if you are able in the chat with anybody like, oh, 10 out of 10, I, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Like, does anybody want to share their score? Thank you so much for sharing. Nine out of 10. Yep, me too. Eight out of 10. <laughs> and we're all, oh, praise be to Miss P, but three is still high. Three, three, or here's the thing about the ACE test. Three or more traumas is considered high. So if you had three or more traumas, this is why we're struggling you. We didn't even know, y'all. We didn't even know. Cecily, yes. Good job. <laughs> My chest hurts. We're going to make it right today. No worries. No worries, okay? So for anybody that has under three, this is great. You're, you're probably going to have a little bit of an easier ride. But give your friends and family this test. Even my ex-husband, he's done a lot to fix himself and he's on this journey too. And I gave him this test and he was like, up until this moment, I actually have fooled myself into thinking I had a great childhood. <laughs> I was like, we all fool ourselves because we blocked it out. I have, uh, my mother left and moved away and left me in our family bed with my grandmother like I, we all live with my grandmother and my mother had decided that she had enough she she didn't feel she was capable of being a mom and and I went to sleep with my mom in the bed and I woke up and she was gone and so I literally have from the time that she was gone I started to remember things like I remember things before she left and then I remember like 
towards when we I moved to Texas back with her. But there's a gap of my life. I don't even remember it because of that trauma. And you might have the same type of things as well. All right, so here is the interesting thing. Because we are instinctual beings and primarily because we live in the law of vibration, this is what the universe would like us to develop first. And in a perfect world with great parents, this model is fantastic. Because at the time that we are children, we are our conscious level of our brain is not yet formed. So most of the actions that you are doing that are out of alignment with what you want, you learned between zero to seven when your emotional intelligence was being formed. So for all of us that have that three or more traumas, this is what shapes our paradigm. This is actually what's doing. And if you don't go into these conscious habits to protect that consciousness, then continue. That's why social media is, y'all need to be really careful over who you are following because if you aren't intentionally building up the conscious mind, then all of that stuff is going into your subconscious and is affecting your behaviors and it is causing a paradigm. What is a paradigm? A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over your habitual behavior and almost all of your behaviors are absolutely habitual. Everything you're doing, you're doing because of habit. And 90% of what you are doing, you learn between zero to seven before your consciousness was developed and it's all going into your subconscious. This is why you're struggling, Ashe. So just have a little forgiveness for yourself. I want you to just like breathe and just be like, damn, I didn't know. So you can stop being so hard on yourself. So here is the crazy thing. Your subconscious, unless you are purposely reprogramming it now that our consciousness is in development because everybody here is an adult. So there's no more excuses. We got to do the work. Here's what your subconscious is in charge of. Your subconscious is in charge of your perception. So some of y'all, when I reach out, I'm like, oh, you be popping off because your perception is off. Everything is, your, is that zero to seven. I had deep abandonment issues, which creates this fear of love that I'm working through. People are like, well, why don't you have a man? Because I'm working through some fear of love, but I know that. So I'm working through some strategies to get that abandonment issues out of me that causes me to be a people pleaser and, and or be too chasey. When women are chasing men, I just know that there's some type of abandonment. Or if a man is chasing what I know, there's some type of emotional intelligence there. Your paradigms will control how you use your time. So if you are feeling hopeless, you're going to be laying around doing nothing because your perception is that, oh, nothing works, nothing happened. We're going to lay in this bed. It affects your creativity. That's why you can't make anything happen. It affects your effectiveness, your productivity, how your logic actually works, your ability to earn currency, who you partner with, the friends that you make, and the job that you take. All of this, unless you are doing conscious work, it's all coming from that zero to seven. And we just took that ACE test. So we know that our paradigm, our subconscious is has some stuff that we need to work out. So this is great though, because we have tools to be able to do that. The subconscious mind is your emotional mind. Your emotional mind cannot reject anything. It cannot see the difference between what is real and what is imaginary. So you, your physical reality could be perceived a certain way, but if emotionally you're feeling like, I don't have anything, everything's bad, people don't like me, Lou, 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 I'm this, I'm that. Your subconscious is like, oh, okay, well, that's what we are. And then that affects your vibration because your emotions are your vibrational center. Your conscious mind helps you reject things. It's your thinking mind. And most people don't think. Mental activity is not thinking. And I'm gonna tell you the difference between mental activity and thinking. The educated mind, it is your intellect. But that subconscious mind is what runs the show, boo-boo. That's what gets everything going. And those things have to line up. The most successful person on this planet is the person that can learn, can unlearn, and then relearn something new. And that's what actually changes your physiology. 
All right, so here's another testimonial of someone that I worked with in the workbook. I'm not here to brag, I'm here to help but I definitely wanted you to be able to know that I've been doing this work for a little, for a while. And if you are a person that really is ready to change, I have some things that's gonna be able to help you. I can help you do that. Now, before we get into the habits, I want to give you an illustration of how your thoughts become things. This is science. This is how you are manifesting. So if you look, if you look around at your life and you ain't got no money, I promise you, you don't have an abundance mindset. You worried about money if you don't have no money. If you want love, it's because you worried about love or you have something that you upset about as far as love is concerned. So I'm gonna show you how your thoughts become things, all right? So the first thing that you need to know, one of the books that changed my life was this book called Anatomy of the Spirit. And I'll actually post it on the resource page after we get off, right? So you can, this book changed my life. This is where I first learned about neuropeptides. Neuropeptides, Candace Pert, who is a neurobiologist, excuse me, she did some research and proved that neuropeptides are the chemicals that are triggered by our emotions that actually turn thought into physical matter. So neuropeptides, very super, super powerful. So you have to understand, your conscious mind is your God mind. Your conscious mind is really what separates us from the animal planet. It is our thinking mind. Now, remember I, taught, I told you that there's a difference between mental activity and thinking? Thinking means that you have mastered perception. You've mastered your will. Your re reasoning is not affected by your ACE, your adverse childhood experience score or, or your poor experiences that you had when you were an adult. You, it's your imagination because that is how the universe and your higher self downloads information into pictures. This is why I work really hard with my clients on visualization. You got to learn how to turn on that head. I need to be able to say, visualize a, a tree. A lot of people can't do it. They were like, well, you know, I saw this, but I didn't see a tree. You should, if I say tree, you should be able to turn your imagination on and visualize that tree you should be able to then go ahead and imprint yourself into that visualization so you could feel the breeze. You could feel what it likes to feel the tree, the sensation of the tree. This is all possible for you because of the conscious mind because this is how you manifest. Also, your memory is stored here. And this is where your intuition is. A lot of us feel like our intuition, oh, it's in my gut. That's your conscious mind sending something to your physical body which is nothing but your receptor to be able to feel and let you know where you are. So here is a great, the conscious mind works off of see, hear, smell, touch, taste. And unfortunately we have over relied onto this because we don't know how to really work with our subconscious mind. Now here's how all of it works. So thoughts come in as an energy. It comes in from a download from the higher self or your ancestors, depending on who you are communicating or who you're connecting. You should know that your higher self is your first spirit guide. That's the first person. You can't ask the ancestors and your spirit guides to do something for you without consulting the higher self. The higher self has the map. So sometimes we're praying for something and the higher self be like, I'm, and we're like, why is this not happening? Because it won't fall you. You wasn't supposed to have it. The higher self will intervene and be like, I don't care how many uh, candles they burning, that ain't for us. That's gonna take us off track, no. And then you keep spending your money wondering why shit ain't happening for you because your higher self is the first one. That's why we're gonna do a higher self meditation first, okay? I'm gonna send you through a higher self meditation because we're gonna connect with our higher self and we're gonna get some answers. But that thought comes in through the mothership. Then what happens is that thought creates a sensation in the body and emotions are engaged with the idea that comes in. So whether that is a good idea or a bad idea, the emotions have to become involved because the emotions are your vibration saying, oh, yes, let's put out this signal. This is what we're doing. And so if you are having negative thoughts that are creating negative emotions, that's what's causing a negative vibration, which is then causing you to attract the very things that you do not want. Thought is energy in motion. And then that emotion causes you to then do certain things. And so then the body steps out and acts out 
on the idea can bind with emotion. I like to say the subconscious and the conscious mind is actually your, your feminine and masculine container, your subconscious, actual emotions and your feelings. And we want to protect those as much as we possibly can. But that's how thoughts become things. It's mechanics, it's science. And this is why above all things, I tell all of my clients, the very first thing that I tell all of my clients is you got to stop the negative thoughts. You can't entertain them. Now, it's a process because the negative thoughts might change, but then the body is still holding on because you got 20 to 50 generations of trauma. You got your A score. You got epigenetics. So the body has to catch up. And that's what we're going to talk about, some of the habits that helps the body catch up. So a lot of times, if you could be affirming things, but if your body say, we don't believe that, you're inadequate, you can't make things happen, it's not going to work. You're just going to be re repeating things in your head. The emotions have to line up with the thoughts, all right? So here's another wonderful client. You can read that on your own. And this is what I really want to talk about for a second. Change your energy, change your life. So I have created this eight-week academy. We're going to talk about the chakras. We're going to talk about the nadis. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this whole energy system. But in addition, I'm going to give you practices and short little videos of things you can do for the root chakra, foods you can eat for the root chakra. Every chakra, every nadi, you are going to know everything that you need. I have another uh, kind of a level one throne healing academy. And some of my students are using throne healing academy to teach other people. And alignment academy is going to be like a part two, all right? And I got a special deal for you guys if you get into that. Now, for some of you who are, you're like, oh my God, I need help with this. I have created a 12-month coaching package. Some of my coaching packages in the past have been like four weeks or eight weeks. And what I see is during that eight weeks, everybody's, they, they're excited, they're gone. And then they're like Pac-Man, they fall off. And so I was like, I really feel like I need to work with people for a full year in order to make sure that they're reset. So I'm super cl uh, classic, uh, glad about this package. And we'll talk about some special deals that I have. But if you really want to change your life and you really, look, Oprah has a coach. Uh, most people that are successful have several coaches. I saw this story by uh, Nicole Nichols and she was talking to Oprah. She was, this her first interview with Oprah. Oprah said, how many coaches do you have? And she asked Oprah, how many coaches you have? And then based off of the number that Oprah said, she went and got more coaches. I have coaches. I have people that help me. And so you need a coach as well. So we have to take these things seriously. And again, I have a little special for all of you guys who showed up. All right. So before we go into the eight habits, I want to uh, stop sharing for a second. And I want to uh, open up. You can unmute yourself. And let's have a conversation if you have any questions. And then we, uh, no, I'm not going to do the meditation. We'll do the meditation in a minute. Any questions? That's something I definitely have to work on. Yep. Ooh, we, not my bachelor's degree actually coming in handy right now. I love that. Birth and regrowth. Yes. This really came on time. All right, Marquita. I love that. Grace. Yes. Grace and compassion with yourself. That is so important, y'all. We must. Do you see this is a difficult journey? Like if you keep looking at yourself as just what you see in the mirror, then, you know, oh, my God, look at all these ACE scores. Oh, y'all, we're going to heal today. We're going to heal today, Ashe. I love it. All right. So let's go back into the presentation. Oh, it's your birthday. Ashe, I love this. Yes. The Alignment Academy is part two, but you don't need to worry about throne healing because I'm going to put throne healing information in there with a little bit of bump up. So no worries. That one would be just fine. And yes, happy birthday. I love how the chat is really supporting one another. All right. So now we're about to lock down into the habits. Let me see what time are we on. Okay, we're doing okay. We're doing all right. And if you have to get off, if we go a little bit over, you have to get off. No worries. No problems. All right. So the very first thing that you must do in order to have a spiritual practice is create a sacred space. Whether it is a altar or just a space that you have that's only for you, that you go sit at, everybody needs to have somewhere they go. 
I, it looks kind of messy over here, but this is my altar. And I have special herbs and oils that I burn in my diffuser right now. I have uh, herbs that are heightening my uh, intuition with sage. I have lavender, which is keeping me calm so I can stay focused. And so putting things in a diffuser, different things like that, just creates you a sacred space. I have off of a second closet that I have in my bedroom. It is nothing but my altar room. There's nothing in there other than stuff that I can connect with myself and connect with the divine. So that's the first thing. Now, here is some things when that you consider because I always get like, you know, well, what should I be thinking about when I'm setting up my sacred space? And again, you don't have to take notes here because you get this workbook, right? So uh, would I like my space to be inside or outside? Think about that. I do have an outside altar as well, my patio or a, a sacred space. You don't have to make it an altar. Altar is kind of a scary word for some people, but you just need to make it a sacred space. What colors and textures call to me? When we talk about Alignment Academy, and we talk about, we're gonna talk about color coding and color being, that's why I'm wearing red right now because I want to inspire you and, and, your, and your root chakra. I want you to just grow and I, I just wanna buzz you. And so red is a color that gets you excited and gets you grounded, okay? So think about what colors, even when we do, when I have my um, touch yoga and I'm reading people, Sometimes colors will just pop out and it'll let me know what aura is blocked. It'll let me know what I need to kind of talk to them about. So colors are super, super important. Is my sacred space private or are others allowed in my space? There are I, off of my altar room, only my besties of besties of besties go in my altar room. Like if you were to come to my house and you're just a guest, I do have sacred spaces that are open, but that closet, don't nobody go in that closet unless that they my ace like Angela's been in that closet I think Taylor's been in there and I think those have been the only two people that have been in my tantra room okay and even after they leave I still will clean the space but that's how sacred it is to me so think about if you're going to allow people in there or not what boundaries do I need to negotiate with others regarding my time this is the most important thing because you, you don't want to set up this sacred space and then let people take time away from you so you can't sit there, okay? You need to be in your sacred space a minimum of 10 minutes a day, a minimum of 10, maximum of an hour or more, okay? 10 minutes to an hour a day will really put you in a great space to be able to receive. Do I need to schedule some me time? Yes, please. And we're going to, I got a little something for you to help you, but Go ahead and put a schedule like this is my time. Put it on the calendar because you will keep it if you put your time on the calendar. What other needs do I have? What do I want to be doing there? Like, what am I trying to accomplish? What are my intentions for this space? There are some spaces I only pray. There are some spaces I do tantra work. Like I have different energy running off of these sacred spaces and I do different work at them. What is the purpose of my space? What makes my heart and soul sing? Like my altars have flowers and pictures and bales and all types and oils and all types of fun things that kind of remind me of like who I am and what I enjoy to bring my soul joy. Because sometimes I still wake up with anxiety. I ain't perfect. I still wake up with, oh my God. But I have a practice now. I go to my sacred space and at that sacred space, I'm working on raising up my frequency and vibration so I can attract to me what I need to be able to attract. And what does sacred mean to me? Everybody, you know, the colonizing mind, I'm, I got to tell y'all, even in the diaspora, we are more colonizers than anything. We don't, we don't, we don't appreciate individualism. We want everybody to be the same. But a part of that is our trauma, because if everybody is the same, it makes us feel more comfortable, right? If everybody's agreeing with me and everybody's doing the same thing, then I feel comfortable in that. But if somebody's doing different, that can be triggering to us. So we have to start defining for ourselves what we believe is sacred, what we believe is important. And so we can learn how to attach to our own identity. And we're going to do a little bit of that when we go through meditation. So here's another sacred, uh, uh, sacred, another question that I get, where should I put my sacred space? 
You want to make sure that it is peaceful and quiet, a little nook and cranny if you need, or a whole room if you have the ability to be able to do that, which is the third spot, a spot in the garden. Uh, uh, Tasha Lathan, she spends a lot of time outside. She grows things, and I'm sure she has a sacred space there. Uh, a window seat. I actually have a little ottoman over here by my window because I have beautiful trees in my backyard. And so when I don't feel like going outside or it's raining, all I need to do is pull up my window and sit right here on my ottoman. And I put candles on my window sill. And that is a place also where I can be able to connect. Um, the kitchen table, if you want to be able to do that, a special chair. This is my special chair right here. This is my thinking chair. So when I really need to be an in intellectual, like beta masculine energy, I sit right here in this chair and it gives me that energy. When I want to be more creative and more being flow, then I'll go over here to my, to my bed. And that's how I do that. So even, even because remember, everything is vibrating. So even when you are in inanimate places, Darren, if you don't mind uh, muting yourself, please. Even when you are in animate spaces, they still have energy for you to be able to do what needs to be done, Ashe, okay? So even these little, nothing's inanimate. Um, the uh, giant floor cushion can be that. And they also have this great thing called grounding mats. Um, you can look on Amazon and it actually is like connected to the earth. These grounding mats, you can put them in your bed. I think they even have grounding pillows. All of these things are very helpful. Your bathtub or your bathroom, very sacred. I have lots of yin ya energy in my bathtub, pictures of mermaids. That's where I do my spiritual bathing. I'm a, I, Primarily the element that I have mastered is water. This is why y'all see me always in the water because that's my prime element that I work with. So spiritual bathing and showers and foot baths and all of this, I do that in my bathroom because it, it really helps me stay connected to nature. Land, actually on the ground, that can be a sacred space, just going to sit outside. And then, you know, I think, I, some people will agree. I still think it's a space for religion. It really is. There are some, if you practice some of these things, right, it really can help you. Plus, I'm not here to talk about the 35 stages of the soul, but some souls need religion in order to exist on this planet. And so I used to push real hard on religion for people and it can cause psychosis. So now if, if you are attached to your religion, just learn the religion that you are following so that you could practice it with excellence. But I, I still, I'm religious and spiritual. People might not know that, but I really am. Operate in both of those realms. All right, so I'm not gonna read this whole list. You can get this in the workbook, but I did highlight some starter things that every sacred space should absolutely have. And then you can add some of the other things that are not highlighted as your higher self dictates, all right? Because that is what I want you to know. When you get off this call, your job is to stay connected to that higher self so you can get the wisdom that you need. So rocks or crystals. Um, the one thing I will tell you is that rocks and crystals are allies. So many times I see people buying crystals, and but they're not doing the work. The crystals aren't going to help you if you aren't doing the work. They're your allies to help you, okay? But even rocks, remember, that's not an animate. It's letting off a vibration. I love going to the river and getting the river rocks. And I got so many river rocks around this house. It's crazy. But I love it because the energy that comes off of them is just, ugh, it just, it's like, it's like the perfect mix of divine masculine and feminine energy because it has this, the energy of the water because it was from the river, but you got the stability of the fact that it's a rock. Oh, it's just amazing. You want to make sure that you have affirmation cards or meditations. And don't worry, because I got some, I got some in here in this workbook for you. It's so great for to be able to help you. Um, you want to make sure that you have scent. That's why I have diffusers and candles and incense. I'm always trying to create some type of scent, not to mention spiritual energies are attracted to that. So if you are a person that's ready to open up to start communicating with ancestors or some of your higher spirit gods, which I, I 
uh, would advise you to work on your higher self first, get your higher self first so you can start trusting what you're doing, okay? Before you start calling on ancestors and spirits, most people call on them first without understanding that your first spirit guy is your higher self, okay? So once you've mastered or you feel connected with your higher self, then you can start communicating with the Orisha communicating. Because let me tell you something, the Orisha have a good side and they have a side they call EV. And I know there's some Orisha venerators here on this call. Um, if you are working with certain deities before you are working through your consciousness, before you're working through that trauma that's in your body, you are more likely going to be exhibiting more of the EV side. And I know everybody's super attracted to Oshun, but Oshun, her EV side is very erratic. She is has a high temper. So a lot of women that have like, really high tempers and things like that. Uh, Oshun has a severe problem with finding love on her EB side. So I, when I see a lot of people working with this energy without knowing what they're doing, I know they're having love issues. I know they're popping off. I know they're having a lot of instability. They're probably constantly being triggered, constantly in their emotions. I'll be trying to help them, but you guys need to know higher self first, okay? So rugs, cushion throws, things that are tactile, photos and images that draw out of you, sounds that hurt music, hurts music, water sounds. These are the basic things that should be in every sacred space, okay? And then everything else is just what we call Louisiana land yap. Now, why should you set up a sacred space? Why is that so important? Number one, by you creating a sacred space, it will actually help uh, you control the nervous system, which helps you reduce stress. It enhances that emotional intelligence because that's what we want to first and foremost raise. We want to raise our emotional intelligence because that's connected to our vibration. Increase our self-awareness, who we are, what we're supposed to be doing on this planet develop compassion and kindness towards others. You know, I'm, it's very hard to piss me off because I'm like, I already know what I know because I know this science. I don't judge people based off of their behavior. I just know, oh, they, they just, here's where they are on their level of work. So I don't judge them or get pissed off. And this actually has helped me be able to do that. It's not like I don't get triggered. It's just that my vibration is so important. So if I let somebody trigger me, and then I go into an anger mode. Now I'm operating in that frequency. And now I'm going to just be bringing more anger towards me. The more I can manage my triggers and keep my energy balanced and keep my vibration balanced, then I can often combat that energy and actually calm them down without them even knowing what's going on. And this is what's available for you too. Manage painful thoughts and feelings. If you have a high A score, I know emotionally it's rough. Trust me, I've been there. I have a nine out of 10, okay? Um, other than imprisonment, I've, I had all of those things happen to me. So I know what type of emotional pain you're in, but those sacred spaces will allow you to calm. It allows you to live balanced and in a conscious life. There's difference between mental activity and thinking. We have to master those six things, perception, will, memory, intellect, all of those things. That is when we are actually thinking because thinking is actually conscious creation and your sacred space will allow you to do that. Reconnecting with your true self, with uh, all of these subtle energies that are around you. And then it gives you a greater sense of clarity, focus, and concentration. I went to look at some of the surveys from the past few years, and almost every client that I've ever uh, worked with have said, I need, I lack clarity. I lack focus. I don't know what's going on. And this thing, these things can be able to help you. So that's habit one. All right. So what should you be doing? I'm not going to go over this. You can go over it in the workbook, but here are some different activities that you can be able to do in your sacred space. Uh, sometimes I'll even do yoga out on my patio. I have a sacred space out there. It's right by the tree. So these are all of the different activities that you can do. And I would say build a plan of what you're going to do at your altar to make it effective. All right, guys, this is, we are going to, this is the most important thing. All right, habit number two, connecting with your higher self first and then connecting with your ancestors. Higher self first and then the ancestors. I did not start this way. 
but I should have. If I would have known better, I would have been more connected to my higher self first. And that would have saved me a lot of fear, a lot of like, who is that? And what's that? And all of this energy, if I would have connected with myself absolutely first. And so the first sacred space that you should actually set up should be for you have all of the things that you like to see your pictures like your best pictures like when you was just smoking it like oh I was looking fine in that picture you know whatever that is whatever is going to make you like love you I hear so many of my clients say I've never been in love before and I'll be thinking you aren't in love with yourself you've never experienced like love for yourself and so if you are a person that says I I've never been in love before fall in love with you. The higher self is your greatest potential. Your higher self is the wise being within all of us. It's calm, it's loving, it's spiritually guided, it brings positive characteristics. And when we live in alignment with our higher self, oh, let me tell y'all, I'm not here to tell y'all that my life is perfect. I am living the dream life that I wanted to manifest at this moment, but I have other things that I want to grow. And through that is like, that can cause a certain anxiety. But if I align with my higher self, my higher self is like, don't worry about that. I love you. I love you. It's all good. Let's try this. This will work. Why don't you go here and do this? Like when you have a relationship with your higher self, honey, and then when you clear out all of that vibrational debris in your body and that higher self says, thank you for working out, I'm gonna come seat in you. I'm gonna come sit in your body and I'm gonna take over. That's when you become your true authentic self. But you have to do the work to prepare the body because the higher self is so powerful. The higher self cannot seat in a body that's full of trauma, full of gossip, full of hate. You still rely on external things, on food and people and pleasure to bring you happiness. The higher self can't really operate in that space. So it'll just hover around you, be in your auric field, kind of communicate with your consciousness. But if you want real life, like you want to just walk down the street and have people throw shit at you and just go, oh my God, can I get $10? And oh, can I love you? Get with your higher self, okay? Your higher self will just, it's, it's amazing for you to be able to do this work. Now, why should you connect with your ancestors? I know a lot of us who have been beaten up with Christianity or we are really highly attached to Christianity. We have convinced ourselves through New Testament doctrine that ancestors are bad. You should know that the Hebrew tradition, even my home girl, uh, she, pures, she prays pure. She like, uh-uh, it ain't no religion. It's a tradition. With the Abrahamic tradition is very steeped in ancestry. And guess what? Even in um, Ifa, it says that you will suffer psychosis if you do not know at least seven generations. This is why in the diaspora and in indigenous people, we're so mentally off balance because we don't know. Some of us don't even know who our great grandmother's name is, who our great great grandmother is. Nevertheless, seven generations. But guess what? I'm not worshiping ancestors. I'm not doing that. I am connecting with the ancestors that live within my DNA code. It's ridiculous to not engage in ancestry because you are your ancestors. You got 20 to 50 generations in your DNA code. So to not be able to connect, remember I said, their drama is your trauma. They want to help you with it. Some of them do. Some of them want to manipulate and still live they frequency. So some of the things that you are doing is because of those lower level energies in your body that you're interacting with lower level consciousness um, um, ancestors. So when you raise your vibration and your frequency, so if you are operating in anger, the ancestors that haven't moved on, that are still in your DNA code, that deal with anger, they're going to be popping off. If you, I have a host of depression, I have to stay out of depression. When I'm in depression, all of those ancestors, and la, 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 all in my ear, they're living and their thoughts are stuck in these frequencies and they are influencing you, whether you like it or not. So everybody is sitting here talking about, I ain't gonna mess around. And they don't know who they are. They don't understand that these people are in your blood, Ashe. So we have to be able to connect with these ancestors to be able to live the life that we have to live. 
Now we are, I'm going to send you guys through an ancestor meditation, a uh, higher self meditation, not an ancestor meditation. There are several types of meditation. Everybody gets caught up into sit quietly and try to relax your mind. There's so many meditations. There's observation meditation where you're just looking and you're not, you're just observing colors and you're observing. Like, I love to do this when I'm doing a walking meditation. I just quiet my mind. I don't react to anything. I just observe the, the birds chirping. I observe how the wind is moving the trees, not bringing any thought to it. Not thinking, oh, why is that doing that? Oh, look at that bird taking out the camera. Oh, let me take a picture of that. Mm -mm. You put your phone up, put your phone on do not disturb. Go out in nature, disconnect your thoughts, and just enjoy what you are seeing. That is a form of meditation. Mantra, prayer, sounds, word. I am the greatest. I have everything that I need. My body is healed from trauma. Moving back and forth and saying that with different sounds and prayers, that's a form of meditation. Guided meditation, which I'm going to do for you right now movement like yoga and tai chi running anything that turns this mind off and and stops those thoughts is a form of meditation i bet you didn't know that love and blessing meditation and manifestation meditation but right now i want everybody to get really extremely comfortable because i am going to send you through a higher self meditation and during this hot, I'm going to turn my camera off because I don't want you guys focused on me. I want you guys focused on um, what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to turn on some music here. Let's see. We'll share there again. Let's come out of that. And also I've, I've put in an ancestor meditation in here. Um, that includes tapping too, to because tapping, y'all see me do a lot of tapping and teaching tapping that helps loosen up that the the trauma that's in your body, being able to do that. And that's why I really like movement meditation and different things like that and guided meditation for people when I'm first getting started. Okay, dokily, I'm gonna stop my uh, camera and then I'm gonna put on this music. And what I am going to need from people in the chat, I just want to know. <laughs> hey, Stacey, yay! I love it that you're here. Oh, I do spoil my students. I, I, I do. Because I just know how it is to like just be by yourself and not have any help on this journey. So, all right. So I want you guys to make sure that you can hear me. And you can also, if someone in the chat would just let me know that they can both hear my voice and you can hear the music. And even if you can't hear the music, my voice is the most important thing. All right, Miss P, very, very good. All right, so we're going to go through a meditation and we look like we might run a little bit long. This might, meditation is going to take us about 10 minutes. Then I have some more. So if you have to go, no worries. You will have access to the replay on that page that I sent you. And I'll put it in the chat too when we get done with the meditation. Oh, you can't hear the music, but you can hear me? Okay. It's distorted on your voice. All right, so let's turn the music off, period. And let's, because I, because me is the most important thing. Very good. All right. And guys, to get us in space, I want us to do this um, breath technique. Let me just, I don't, just let me stop this here. I want to, for us to get into a breath technique, we're going to go into something um, called nostril breathing. Take your fingers with your thumb and your pinky thumb, because this is going to get you Put that breath right into that pineal gland. It's going to help you relax, especially if you're not used to meditation. This will help you get into a nice relaxing state. And if you fall asleep, no worries. You can get it on the replay, get you some rest. It's okay. So on the right nostril, hold that in first or left. It doesn't matter, whichever one. What you're going to do is going to breathe in on this nostril. And then while you're holding your breath, you will loosen the other one. 
and breathe out and then back in up that nostril and it'll look like this. This type of breathing will make you a little high, especially if you're not used to breath work and it'll relax you down. It, it, and this is the breath work I do in the morning as soon as I wake up because it puts me in such a relaxed state. So again, I'm gonna breathe. Hold the breath there. Squeeze the other nostril, blow out. Breathe in from that same nostril. All right, so let's do this four times. And after we do this four times, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little high myself. I love nostril breathing. <laughs> it just relaxes you. And then we'll go into the meditation. And this is where I want you to activate your imagination. This is where we get to do that. All right, let's go ahead and we'll start. Now you can keep with that breath if you want, or you can simply put your hands on your lap, close your eyes, try to stay in an upright posture. If that's difficult, go ahead and lay out. Make sure that your hands are by your side or on your womb, either or, or your stomach. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the, um, stop the video. You do not need to see me because I want you focused totally on what we are about to do. Keep breathing, breathing in and out, very slowly, calming your breath down. And as you are breathing in, I want us to go ahead and get focused on that body. The best thing to do is to just talk to your body, especially if you are over anxious or overthinker. So I want you to physically say out loud or in your mind's eye, just relax feet, relax, 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 just calm down. Take a deep breath in and blow out. As the energy begins to move up your calves, just tell your calves, even if you have to massage them a little bit, relax, 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 Asha, relax, relax. If you need to wiggle them, do what you need to do. You can rotate your ankles. I just want your body to be naturally relaxed. This is actually a technique called the uh, uh, relaxation muscle technique. Sometimes we have to do that. As you are breathing, let the air and the relaxation move right up those legs and those thighs. And say to your body, to your thighs, relax, thighs, relax, 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 relax. Take a deep breath in. Blow out any stress. As you begin to Feel more relaxation. Go ahead and tell those hips and that belly, just calm down, relax, 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 relax. 
Keep on breathing right into your heart center. Imagine that you are sending breath down into your heart and tell your heart, I am here to receive. So can you help me relax? Relax, relax, relax. I'm here to receive. I'm here and I'm ready. I'm ready. As you move into your shoulders, begin to rotate those shoulders, move your neck from side to side while you breathe. Tell your shoulders to relax, 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 relax. Take a deep breath in and relax your throat and let a nice hum out your throat. Take your breath in and breathe out through your throat. Mm. You don't have to be cute to just get that throat chakra going. Air in. Mm. Relax, 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 relax. Imagine that your breath is actually moving into your head. And this is where I want us to stay. I want us to activate our imagination. And I want you to imagine that you have some stairs in front of you, some stairs. It's 10 stairs right in front of you. And don't try too hard if this is your first time in a guided meditation or your imagination is off. Just breathe and relax. You don't have to be anywhere. You don't have to do anything. This is your permission to rest. But if you have those stairs caught in your mind's eye, I want you to slowly walk down those stairs. You're going to walk down. Now it's nine stairs. Gonna walk down a little bit more. Now it's eight stairs. Breathe while you step on that stair, just breathe. Go ahead and step down into seven stairs, seven stairs. Seven stairs, seven stairs, seven stairs. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Go down, now six stairs. And you're just getting lower and lower. Five stairs, five stairs left. You're walking down four stairs. With every step. Every step you are releasing into your breath and you're feeling more and more relaxed. Go down four, four stairs, four stairs. Breathe. Three stairs, three stairs, three stairs. Two stairs, more relaxed with each step you go down. More relaxed with each stairs, two stairs. Breathe and drop down one more stairs. One more, one more, one more. And as you settle off the stairs into the ground, I want you to imagine that a white light is in front of you. And that white light an image is coming towards you, a shadow is coming towards you. And again, don't stress out, it's not happening, Nasa. Just breathe and relax. It's your first time, it's no problem. It's no problem, just relax, relax. And whether you see the image or not, you can feel it. Maybe the temperature has changed. Maybe you get goosebumps. Maybe you feel the most relaxed that you've ever felt before. That is your higher self telling you, I am here. And so I want you to say these words aloud or say it in your mind's eye. I am here. I am ready. I am one with you. 
I am here. I am ready. And I am one with you. And now that you feel connected, I want you to ask your higher self some very important questions. Higher self, I once dwelled in union with the creator and all other spirits, and I was unique among the many. And I had these special traits, but I can't remember. Tell me what my special traits were. Please tell me, tell me, tell me, higher self, tell me. Tell me why I'm so special. Tell me why I was born. Tell me why I'm here. Tell me why I'm present. Why did I come here? Why did spirit call me out? I know that I had a vital role. Can you tell me what, what's my vital role? What's, what's my vital role, please? Please communicate with me, higher self. I want nothing to be in union with you. Listen to what the higher self is telling you while you are breathing. I am unlike any other being and I know that higher self. The creator asked me to join this manifesting reality. And I just want to know why I'm here. I just want to know why I'm special. Please communicate with me. Breathe, breathe, breathe while you are in this space. And if you've never felt before and you've never imagined before, just observe the peacefulness of being still, the peacefulness of being relaxed, the peacefulness of beginning the journey with the higher self. Why the higher self is communicating to you why you are special, why you are unique, why you are here. Observe your surroundings, feel the moment of connection. Feel yourself in alignment. Just breathe. You move your body back and forth if you must to deal with the energy in your body. And now ask your higher self, higher self, what's holding you back from being all that I am? Please tell me, am I holding on to unforgiveness? Do I just need to be more patient? Do I need to be more loving towards myself? What do I need? Tell me, what's my block? Why can't I get what I want? Why am I not aligned with you? Please tell me, tell me, please. And just breathe and relax while your higher self communicates to you. <sighs> Receive your messages because we're going to be lifting up and coming back up. Let the images come to you. Let them come to you. And I want you to feel it, your emotions. That's your vibrational center. You need to feel the moment, feel the goosebumps, feel the love, feel the clarity, feel the forgiveness, feel the trauma releasing out of your body. Feel the gratitude, feel the love, feel what you feel in this moment and let it flow. And after you receive your messages, you look behind you and there's the stairs again. Hug your higher self, hug and embrace. 
And I want you to physically do that too while you are sitting. Rub on yourself, rub your arms, rub your shoulders, hug yourself, feel the connection with self. Let your hands be your healing guide as you just embrace in a physical embrace with your higher self. I see your higher self kissing you on your forehead, kissing you on your cheek, just loving on you. Receive the love, receive it from that higher energy, that higher faculty. Say goodbye and walk your way to the stairs. And you're gonna come up in 10 and then in nine and then in eight seven, six stairs are now left. And as you climb up the stairs, you're starting to see the wonderful life. Five stairs, climbing up in four stairs, climbing up in three and two and one. And now you are on the top floor at a door and the stairs are disappearing and go ahead. Close the door, wiggle yourself, wiggle your body, open your eyes. I wanna see a nice stretch, Ashe. Stretching your body from moving it from side to side. Go ahead in the chat and let me know that you are with me, you are back. Did anyone receive any messages? Just tell me how you feel. Tell me how you feel. Ah, uh, welcome back, Rakita. Tell me how you feel. Did anybody see images or did you just have a relaxing situation? I'd like to see if anybody got, received any messages. We don't have time to share, but just put in the chat. I received, I saw. Okay, that's no problem. At least you got relaxed, Marquita. We can work together. Honestly, it got um, got emotional for me. That that's your higher self opening you up. I got a light pitch. Oh, very good. I'm back, relaxed and fell asleep. I love that. Yes, Stacy received some messages. I've been at work, so I've been listening. I feel the energy. I will do the practice later. No problem. I'm right here. She received the message. All right. So some people had relaxing sensations. Your ability to receive messages has to do with your ability. The more you do this and the more, oh, she received and saw a bright silver light. I say, yo, I love that soft flash. Yes, the more you do this, the more you will see and the more you connect. You just got to turn. When we're not used to meditating or feeling or being quiet with our thoughts, Things can be difficult, but that's fine because I have included a meditation for you so you can be able to do that bright light and tears. I love tears. I received and I felt my body tingling the entire time. That is so, that is your body waking up, her to serve. Yes, Joss. I told you I'm here making a Reese's, honey. We are all here to serve. I love that. I love it. So on the um page, and I'll put the page in last because some people may need to go off because we are running behind. And I'm so sorry about that. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and walk through the, the rest of these steps here. And if you indulge me another 30 minutes, we can go ahead and, and try to get as much stuff done as possible. This is the one exercise that if we don't do anything, finish anything else on this web, I want us to walk through this cognitive restructuring exercise. We must do this because remember, like I said, we have to be able to work on our thoughts. We have to banish negative thoughts. You can read this on your own, on, on, on your own accord because I really want us to walk through this. This is a coach walked me through this and I swear to goodness, it was so enlightening for me. All right, so on a piece of paper, and you'll be able to do this on the workshop, I want you to write C-T-F-A-E-R down the paper on the side, leaving a little spaces for you to write things, okay? The C stands for circumstance. The T is for thought. The F is for feeling. 
The A is for action, the E is for energy, and the R is for results. So let's do this together. So let's say your circumstance is you don't have a partner or I'm overweight or I don't have money. Like that's, that's the fact. Uh, that's the reality, what's coming through your senses. When you don't have that, what thought does that trigger? I'm lonely. I can't find nobody. Nobody will love me. I, I can never lose weight. Lose weight is so hard. What thought does that circum that physical circumstance cause? Me? Write that down. And then when that thought comes into your mind, what feeling does that give you? I know when I was really hyper-focused on, I don't have a lover, I want a man. <laughs> that would, it, it would uh, have me feeling lonely, feeling separated, feeling depressed. That's the feeling that that thought would give me. What about you? Whatever your circumstance is. And then when you have that feeling, what's the action that you usually take? Do you go lay in the bed? Do you go eat something? Do you maybe uh, engage with people that you really don't want to be around? But you just, you know, I'm lonely. So what action does that feeling cause you to do? What action do you take? And then the vibration from you, what, what, what do you usually put out? What are you feeling? What usually do you attract when you're bringing that energy on? Sometimes that it can be pain in the physical body sometimes. But you need to know what you're vibrating at. And then what result does that give you? Does that usually get you your man? Does that usually help you lose weight? Or is the result that I'm still overweight, I'm still broke, I still don't have love? What's the result? Give you a couple of minutes. And this might be super hard. So you might just be like, I need to do this at my sacred space, Nasa. I can't do this right now. That's fine. I just want you to know how to do it. Great job. All right, now we're gonna flip the script. We're gonna do something different now. Now, instead of starting with the circumstance, let's go ahead and do that opposite. So let's talk about the result that we want to achieve. So let's just say the result is I want love and ain't nothing wrong with wanting that. Or I wanna be thinner. I want my bank account to be fatter. What type of energy frequency do you need to be vibrating at? Happiness, I probably need to be happy and more loving. That's the energy I probably need to embody. Be more happy, I need to be more loving, be kinder, more feminine, more masculine, whatever it is. What's the energy that you need to be putting out to get that result? Think about it. And then if you had that good feeling energy, what type of action do you think you would take? Probably would go out more. I'd go to the gym maybe. I'll put a calendar together and get more organized. What would I do? What action would I take? And after I took that action, how would you feel? I feel great after a workout. I feel great when I'm serving. I feel great when I do yoga. Like, how would you feel if you took that action? And then taking that action uh, or taking that feeling, what type of thoughts would you have if you felt that way? You'd probably think, I'm a badass. I'm so smart. I'm big femme energy. Woo, I'm gonna be burning it up this summer. What, what, what thoughts would you have once you took that action? And then what type of circumstance, what do you think would be the fact? You would lose weight, you would find love. What, what would be that circumstance? This is what you need to do. And I want you guys to take time when you get this workbook to go through these exercises. And 
If this is a lot, I've even broken it down even more. I've given you some worksheets for thought awareness so you can really look at your negative thoughts, look at your rational thoughts, look at your positive thoughts and start identifying and analyzing your mood. This work changed my life. Okay, I do this whenever I feel stuck, whenever I'm stuck in a vibration. I always go through cognitive restructuring. This is super important. Okay, so I want you guys to be able to do that. So that's why this is in the workbook. Lots of stuff there. The next thing is affirmations. Affirmations are super important. You guys don't really need me to go through this, but I can tell you that affirmations are scientific. And so I have put some information in here about the fourth habit of affirmations. You need to make sure that you are choosing the right affirmations and make sure your affirmations are I statements. And specifically when you put the I am, you activate that God molecule and that puts a lot of power behind your, man, your uh, affirmation. So I want you to read this so you can really be able to do this. And here, record audio. I do that. I record my voice because my subconscious only believes me. It doesn't believe what people say around me. It only believes what I believe. And so my voice talking to me is the most powerful affirmation. So get your voice recorder out and start being able to do that. Now, if we had time, what I was going to do is I was going to have you come up with your own affirmations, but we're running out of time but I've given you some in the workbook and I've made it so you can cut them or put them in a frame or laminate them because I want these on your sacred space. I want you to be looking at these. So find ones that resonate with you. I am in control of my actions. I am valuable. I am enough. Remember, starting with that I am energy. Yes, honey, I can learn from my mistakes. It's our right to feel my emotions. These are important affirmations. I can make a difference. These emotions will pass. They're just here to tell me where I am in the matrix. That's all. I believe in my abilities. I am responsible for my words. This is the one thing I will tell you. This is the biggest changer of thoughts. Do not entertain negative thoughts and, and watch your words and your life will change just from doing those. I grow from my mistakes. I don't need to be perfect. I get better every day. And I always tell people I grow 1% every day. I have a positive attitude. I forgive myself for my mistake. It is enough to do my best. I am strong. I am determined. I can get through anything. I got the God molecule up here in my head. I can do it all. And then I've created some blank ones for you. So again, you can print and cut these pages. I want you to write your I am affirmations on there. Put them on your altar. Put them on your wallet. And whenever you feel, put them as a screensaver on your phone if you need to. Whenever you are needing to restructure your mind, you got to go into these affirmations. Affirmations, it's science. That, that article I just bypassed because I don't have time to go through that. It's going to tell you the science behind affirmations. This is not wootsy woo. You got to start using that bendy and that throat chakra to reprogram your DNA. Your voice is powerful. Even in Abrahamic tradition, it says that the great uh, creator spoke things into existence. And we are made from the create, the same stuff the creator is made out of. So here's some other great reviews, because if you are going to invest in your wellness with me, I need you to have proof of the people that I've helped, the people that have changed their life because they've worked with me. Even other healers, most of you guys know D. Ray and her husband, Dream Wise. If you don't, they're, they're great healers and guides as well. And I worked with her. I read her. She trusted me enough to read her. So I can be able to do that for you. Number five, we got three more. The power of journaling. People always say, I don't know how to journal. I have some journal prompts in here. You must journal. You must get those thoughts out of your head. Sometimes when I'm upset with someone, I will write, I will in my journal, I will write them a letter. But because I understand the law of mirroring, I will put my name in place. So if I'm, you did, da, 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 I'll put my name and I'll be like, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing that stuff too. So journaling is a powerful tool and most people don't take it because I don't know what to write. You know what to write. You just don't want to be with your feelings. 
You don't want to look at it on paper, honey, but you got to be able to do that. You can review your day. You can review what went well, what didn't. Sometimes I just jot down little notes. You can make a travel bucket, list five things that you appreciate about yourself and other people. You can write down what your ideal day is, what you, what you might want to be able to accomplish. And here are some questions. I was hoping to have time to do this, but you can do this on your homework. And I really want you to work through this workbook. Take a habit a day. Over the next eight days, take a habit a day because it's an exercise under each habit, as you saw, and start building this into your everyday life. Here's, are my goals really what I want? Because again, if we're disconnected from the higher self, our wants and goals may come from that ace, come from that trauma. So you need to really think, do I really want this or is this something I'm programmed? So think about that. Answer in one word, what is between me and the dream life and my goal? Ask, what does the word happiness mean to me? I had to ask myself this, what makes me happy? I really didn't realize I wasn't even in tune to what, I, what happiness really meant to me. You got to figure out not what happiness, not what the world tells you is happy, but what you believe is happy for you. Do I drive conscious or mass consumption? Am I just in my subconscious going through habitual behaviors or am I using my higher faculties, my God consciousness to now create? What disadvantages of another person am I not willing to put up with? Let me say, I have the strongest boundaries now. I used to be a complete doormat people pleaser. People always are so shocked by that. And I'm still very kind, very loving, very nurturing, even more so than I was before, but I got super strong boundaries. I'm going to let you know, mm, I don't get down like that. And I cut you off super fast. If I see, I look at them like, this is toxic behavior that I see in them that's so deep in their DNA trauma. I don't really want to get involved in that. Or maybe like they almost there. I see that I, I'll spar with them a little bit. It just depends. I'm looking at you. I'm trying to, now that I have the information I have, I don't entangle with people that are a certain level of consciousness. And you need to do that as well. How could I simplify my life and focus on what is most important? These are journaling prompts that you could focus on. I've even put you some journaling pages in the workbook for you to be able to get the information that you need. All right, and there's a few pages, like five or six different journal pages. Number six, changing your paradigm through repetition. This is where you need to be super focused on the habits. You need to be thinking, am I operating integrity and in alignment with my desires? I love Bob Proctor, and I wish I had my, my notebook in front of me from a video that he, but I'm going to put it on our resource site. The one thing that I'm going to paraphrase, he says something like, determine what you want and then do nothing else other than what you want. You have to put all your energy, this wishy-washy energy back and forth. That's not going to get you manifestation. You need to make a decision. This is what I want, and this is what I want to accomplish. And then you need to see if your habits are in a line. And your habits are your routines. You need to be checked in. What am I doing in the morning? Here's some questions that you can ask yourself. What is my work routine? What meals are going to support? So many times we're shoving junk in our, because our subconscious mind, we're just through habit shoving junk in our mouths. We need to be like, why am I eating this? And what are these salty potato chips going to do? I'm going to tell you salt calcifies the pineal gland. And a lot of these root vegetables, we should be only eating certain root vegetables when we're working on the root chakra, because some of them are not good for us to be consuming all of the time. You need to be asking, when I eat this, what is this going to do for me? I love sugar. Sugar is, I love it. But I'm able to more manage it because I'm like, I'm doing this right now. Sugar's not going to be good for me. Okay. So we need to be asking ourselves that you, I want you to evaluate your daily routine, evaluate your goals. You can read through this for habit number six, but I really want you to be intentional ab about what you're doing because your habits need to match up with your desires. I promise you, if you have a desire to lose weight, but you're still shoving junk, still keeping yourself around toxic people, still in a, in a toxic job that you hate, you are creating so much cortisol. Your body is not going to support you and your body is reprogrammed through habits. 
through the things that you're doing all the time. So here's a habit tracker. You can write over here, work out, breath work, whatever you need to do. And then I've even created, I, um, I'm a certified yoga. Yeah, whenever I do something for myself, I want to learn how to do it right so I can teach other people. And if you're in Atlanta, I do a yoga class every other Sunday at the Honeypot Energy and Art Center in East Atlanta Village. All right. It's a two hour. It's a, like a, a 90 minute class. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I do Reiki. We do breath work. Stacy's there. I'm, she's been there every class since I started. And so Stacy, if you're still on, let them know in the chat how amazing these touch yoga classes are. But here is a routine specifically for you in the workbook. There's even a little link here for you to get a Spotify list so you can be doing these moves while you are exercising because moving trauma out of the body and I do bed yoga. People don't, I, look, I'm a lazy healer. I'm a lazy guy, okay? I like to do things the easiest way. I'll be up in my bed doing asanas, honey. Breath work. Most of my exercise happened in this bed before it happened on the mat, I say, okay? I'll be in the bed looking at, oh, that's great. Let's do that. And also some of these moves doing them on the mattress, it causes you to have to uh, uh, engage more of your stability muscles. But my yoga practice is usually the first 10 minutes when I wake up, I go straight into breath work before I even get out of bed and I start doing yoga right in my bed. Y'all be extra with all of that. I don't have to do that. You ain't got to do that. Now, I wanted you, Bob Proctor is freaking amazing. He just transitioned in February, but I wanted you to have the steps on how to make a, and set the right goal. So you're going to be tapped into your higher self, getting information from, from your higher self. You're going to make a list of everything that you want. Choose one that you really, really want. Write down why you want it. And then I have put um, some goal cards in here. And I love how he talks about, you always want to talk about uh, your goals as if they already here. So many times I hear people saying, I am going to get such and such, such and such is coming. If you keep telling the universe is coming, it's going to always be coming. You want to communicate to the universe that it's here. I am happy and grateful now that I have the love that I want. I am happy and grateful now that I have a high paying job that sustains me. I am happy and grateful now that da, 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 da. And so write your goals down again, cut this up, laminate it and keep it on you at all times. So you can remind yourself of your goal. Maybe you at the table, you're lonely and you're at the table with somebody that you know is not compatible for you, but you feel yourself compromising because you're, you have perceived that you have some state of loneliness take that card out. I, I, um, I'm so happy and grateful now that I am with a loving person that treats me well. And if that person ain't that, then, you know, thank you so much for a lovely day. So I have created these goal cards so you can print them and be able to write down your goals. And then I've even put a video in here so you can be able to look at Bob's, his system. Okay. I don't, I always tell y'all if it's something I created or something that I'm I'm practicing so it can walk you through how to do this, especially since we're moving a little bit fast. And then I've given you my schedule so you can mimic. This is kind of what I do. I wake up between six or seven. If I wake up before seven, I just go into breath work and, and do whatever I want. I really don't take the body because that's download time. Three to six anyways, if you're waking up between that time, that's your higher self waking you up trying to have a conversation with you. So you shouldn't be doing a lot of activity during that anyways. You should just be breathing and trying to be connected. But as soon as I awaken to the fact that I'm back in this realm, I immediately go into some type of breath work. And then I'm doing some type of asanas in the bed before I even get out. About 7.30, I'm going to read my cards, connect with my higher self, with my ancestors. I'm doing divination. This is my magical time where I'm doing that. And that can go anywhere from an hour or more, depending on what's going on. And then I'll go into heavier exercises. If I want to do some power yoga or I want to go to the gym or maybe I want to go out for a walk, then I do that at 8.30. Go ahead and shower or take a spiritual bath. I go ahead and do some light housework, things that, you know, you got to keep clutter out of your space. Clutter brings on a lot of confusion. We do not live in an inanimated world. So clutter has a vibration. All right. And clutter adds to your clutter in your mind. So I want to make sure my space is always looking, not always because my bed's not made up right now, but for the most part, I like my space to be super clean. 
Then at 11, this is usually when I'm starting my business, when I start readings or start working with my coaching clients, or I'm, I'm leaving to go to Honey Pot to do whatever work I'm doing with Lana or whatever the case may be. But I don't do anything for the outside world before 11. I know if you work a nine to five, you might have, you know, you might have to adjust this, but I just wanted you to know what I do. Then I break fast. That's what breakfast is. It's a play on words. You know, the human uh, English language is, is raggedy as hell. Break fast. I usually break fast at 12. Before 12, I'm drinking water. I'm drinking juices. Maybe I'll do some nuts or apple or something like that if I'm really hungry, but I'm not eating any like real, real food until 12. That's intermittent fast. One o'clock, I'm back to work. And then I usually work till about six o'clock, cook dinner. And then seven is whatever I want. That's why most of my lives start at seven because this is when I mostly finish my day. And then I'm always setting my intention for the next day. So I'll write down, what do I want to do tomorrow? How do I want to feel tomorrow? What do I want to create tomorrow? So it's not just the to-do list. You need to write down your to-do list. But I'm also thinking about like what I want to create. What, what do I want tomorrow to look like? And this is really good before you go to sleep because your dreams can assist you in that. Now, I've given you a blank one so you can print this as many times as you want. If you don't have a planner, you can actually put this and hole punch it and put it in there. But I want you to start planning your day. You will not master manifestation without discipline. And you don't have to, y'all see, I do yoga in the bed. Come on now, I'm not doing nothing crazy. I don't like to be stressed out. I'm a Gemini, I'm a very... My nervous system can get real erratic. I have to do everything in my timing and do everything, but you have to push past the body, okay? So put your schedule together, all right? Number seven, daily self-love. I'm not gonna go through this part of the presentation of the workbook rather, but I really want you to be focused on self-love. Take this self-love quiz, if we have more, I overshot. I thought I actually thought we was gonna be able to get all these exercises in two hours. What was I thinking? <laughs> Self care quiz. Take it. I want you to do that and look at your scoring point because I want you. Remember, if you've never been in love, start with yourself. Start with falling in love with yourself. Get to really know what self care is. What are the goals for your mind? What are the goals for your body? What habits do you want to be able to achieve? But I want you to practice self love, and because of that, I've given you a thirty day calendar where you can really be like, okay, today I'm going to set my clock. And once at every hour, I'm going to go into deep breath work. You can do nostril breathing. You can do the humming breath. You can do diaphragmatic breathing, but I'm going to make sure that I master breath. Then day two, I'm going to stretch and meditate. I'm going to try stretching in the bed before I get up and see how that works. Journaling. So these are things that I want you to try for the next 30 days to create a closer relationship with your higher self because self-love draws the higher self closer to you. And that's how you can create more love. And then finally, number eight habit is that we have to start focused on high vibrational food and you can start phasing. It's not about what you, you don't have to boil the ocean. Good Lord, human noise. We try to change the world in a day. You can 1% a day change will get you to where you need to get to. But Food is our allies to help the body. We need high vibrational food. The strawberry is vibrating. What frequency do you think of a, a strawberry is vibrating as a dead hunk of meat on your plate? And I'm not here to judge you. I'm just saying, think about it. When you look at your plate, if you are eating like you have no fresh fruits and vegetables and you're eating burgers and french fries all day, what do you think the vibration that you are giving to your body? And that is why plant-based eating is the most effective way to help manifestation. So I've given you, I'm a, I, I'm a vegan-ish. Like I still eat fish occasionally, but most of my diet is nuts and fruit and salad and oatmeal. This is what I'm eating most of the time. And it's not something I did purposely. My body just craves these things because your higher self wants to give you um, what it needs. So here's a little quiz. So you can take a quiz on like what's vegan and what's not. So you can um, get that answers key here. So don't cheat. I've also given you a little checklist. So when you go grocery shopping, I told you, I spoil y'all. Stacey, right. I give you what you need. And this is free y'all. Okay. Um, you have all of this information for those of us that have family and have children. I wanted to put a guide in here 
about what you need to know if you want to transition your entire family over to plant-based eating is super important. And then I've even put a five-day a plant-based meal plan in for you. If this is the first time you're going into plant-based, seven days may be super challenging for you to do. So take the weekends to do what you want, but start off with five days of eating like this. Vegan pancakes, you can get a nice vegan gluten-free mix by Red Mill at the grocery store and be able to have you some fun little vegan pancakes with some fruit and stuff on. That's one of my favorite things to make. I'm usually in the morning, I'm juice, nuts uh, is what I'm eating in the morning when I'm breaking fast or oatmeal, things like that. So I wanted you to have a nice little list. This is not an alkaline, I'm not an alkaline vegan. Okay, so this is not what that is. But if you are just wanting to clean up your diet, I've given you a meal plan so you can be able to write down everything that you're eating and really start tracking. Because again, the body is trauma moves out of the body through repetition and taking action. And that's something that we definitely have to do. Okay, we got through it, guys. We got through it. It is, we're about 20. Um, eight minutes, but I wanted to tell you real quick, thank you so much for showing up. I hope this workshop was so helpful for you. And I hope that it really will, it, first of all, I hope you realize how powerful you are and just how you just been misusing your equipment. You didn't know. I didn't know this stuff, but you now you know, but it's a journey. And so I told you guys, I've had coaching packages before, but I've usually had them for like three months or whatever. And I see that that's not really long enough. Most of the coaching packages I've started to enroll in with other guides and business coaches, they're lasting anywhere from six to 12 months. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go, it's time to really dig in into the gifts and really help people. So I have a 12 month coaching package. And for everybody that's on this web, you're going to get $500 off that coaching package and you're going to get Alignment Academy. So if you sign up for the coaching package, you get the coaching package and you get Alignment Academy where I'm going to be really walking through um, everything that you need to understand your body system. It is going to be extremely comprehensive. And let's just say, I don't know if I want the coaching or maybe the your, your physical currency is not where it needs to be. I wanted to at least give you some type of deal. So Alignment Academy is on sale for $220, um, two, $222, regularly th 333 If you were to buy the coaching package out or the uh, Alignment Academy outside of this web. And let me tell you something, I have put everything into this coaching package. Everything that you need. First of all, we start on the 12th. Again, you can look at these testimonials. And also I have several other reviews because I want you to know that I, I can get you there. Tasha Lynn, tell them I can get them there if you're still on. I can get you there. Trust me, okay? I can get you there. But this package uh, is really broken down so we can be super, super specific. And because I wanted the package to be able to align to both everybody's budget, Maybe you don't need the one-on-one. -on -one. The Butterfly Package, is it has 12 one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. We will meet. The first two will be higher self-reading. Again, I'm a medium. I'm very telepathic. I will tap into your higher self and tell you exactly what your higher self needs to know, okay? What you need to know from your higher self. Then the second reading will be ancestral tapping into your your DNA ancestral code, see what trauma needs to be healed and what issues you may have that are blocking you. And then the rest of the 10 sessions, we're going to be working to develop the plan to attract your life. In addition to that, I always think it's important to build community. So we will have group sessions as well where everybody comes together. And during then, those will be our workshops similar to this but honed in on a specific topic. And don't worry, I got the topics listed so you know exactly what we're talking about. Because I understand this is an investment in wellness. So I want you to know exactly what you're getting. We have a Facebook group, and then you are going to have 24 recorded body sessions. I used to do these recorded long webs where you went in and do that, but there's not gonna be a, a lot of, most of what you're learning is gonna be in our one-on-ones and in our group sessions. The recorded sessions will be tapping sessions. There'll be yoga sessions. There'll be breath work sessions. They'll be totally focused on specific body work. And you will have one 
every single week, okay? Special discounts if I'm doing anything and then a very extensive workbook. Now, for let's say, I don't know if I won't need the one-on-one. -on -one. I have a group coaching package. It's a little bit less expensive that you can jump into here. Again, you get six group sessions um, you also get six working group sessions. So where on the one-on-ones, we're going to be doing specific activities. You guys will kind of get that too. I wanted to give you exactly what you need. You'll still get the 24 recorded body work sessions. You'll still get the discounts and you'll still get the workbook. This is what we will be covering every single week. And month one, you will know exactly what we will be talking about you will know exactly what the recorded sessions will be every single week. So you will know what to expect. There, there's no, what are we going to be talking about? This is all a curriculum and a guide. And as you see, even these are, we're going to identify those limited beliefs. We're going to work through that ACE trauma that you got when you were a child. We are going to start identifying your strengths and managing your weaknesses, embracing your vibration. Month four, you can read that. You can see all of what we are going to be doing every single month. So six week of in, six months of intensive work. And then the rest of the six months, you'll be able to have unlimited access to me by text and email. I got a question. What's going on with this? I'm feeling like this. You can have discounts on additional one-on-one -on -one sessions if you still feel like, you know what? I think I want some more one-on-one -on -one throughout the year but I want to give you a full 12 months of support to be able to do that. Now, this package is usually $2,500 for the entire year. $2,500 for the year. Some of y'all therapists is charging more money than that. And you are not getting half of the information that I am giving you through this package, okay? I'm giving you everything I have because I am here to make Arisha. And I have to go to my creator and take account for the work that I did to help people be able to ascend. That's why I give you so much. It's not a big deal. I do this every day, okay? It's not a big deal at all. That's why I give you so much support. So you're gonna get, so this package is normally $2,500 for a year. You're gonna get it for $2,000 for a year. You can break it down, pay in full. You can do six months or you can do 12 months and you're not locked in. Let's say you pay in full. And three months in, you're like, ah, this is too intensive or ah, money's kind of funny. Then we'll, I'll prorate your money and give it back to you. Or if you come in three months and you pay three months and then you email me and be like, ah, this is not for me. Then I stop your subscription. It's, it's a no brainer. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, I have been doing this over six years and I've only had one person drop out. One person at six years that dropped out of my, my academy. I don't know why, it, but I, whatever but one out of hundreds of people that I have coached or that have ran through my academies, all right? And again, you get the Alignment Academy for free as a part of your coaching package when you do that. And again, you can break your payments down, full pay six months or 12 months. Now, if you don't feel like you need the one-on-one -on -one coaching, maybe you're a guide, maybe whatever, I don't need all of that, but I really wanna know how this energy body works. I really wanna know how to master you learn how to walk, you learn how to talk, you learn how to do everything with your physical body. Now you need to learn how to work this energy body. If that is something that's interesting to you, you want to sign up for Alignment Academy. And the cool thing is, if you go to the Alignment Academy page on my website, again, I, I want people to know what they're buying. I want people to know what they're getting. So you will see exactly what you will be learning every single week and why you are learning it, okay? I don't want anybody tripping. And the first 20 people that enroll, if you just want to get the academy, the first 20 people, I'm going to give you an aura reading. We'll set up a one-on-one -on -one and I will give you an energy reading and talk to you about the vibrational degrees, which auras are blocked. So you can be able to start doing that work, okay? And this is even if you sign up for the, if you get the coaching package, now you get 12 coaching and you get an aura reading if you do both of these. I'm giving away the bank because I am ready to like serve. I'm ready to help you. And the great thing about this is once you learn it, you can teach it to other people. I am not a hoarder. I, I didn't make up chakra information. I didn't create this. I, I don't understand why healers are so, hey, hey, Ain't nothing new on this planet. Take the information and help others. So many of my students 
are taking Throne Hill Academy and teaching Throne Hill Academy to their children. You can do this. This information, once you've learned it, is yours. And I want you to take it and give it to other people. So let me go ahead and put this uh, page in the chat. This is a discount page. Only people that come to this workshop actually has access to this discount page, okay? Uh, let me go to everyone in the meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and put that link in here. And then also let me put the link in for the workbook so you guys can get that as well. I'm gonna put that. And by tomorrow, I will have this workbook uploaded. So you can go through there. And as you see, it has interactive links for different meditations and different things that you can be able to join. But I would really love to work with you over the next year to help you be able to attract the life that you want. And this deal is not gonna last, uh, Shay, okay? So you have, I'm gonna give you 48 hours to make up your decision about, I want this package. I need to manifest this coaching package money. I want this academy. I need to get this academy money. Whatever you need to do, I'm going to give you 48 hours to do that. And then after 48 hours, so today's Thursday, so I'm going to give you to Monday. All right, so Sunday night at 1159, this workshop discount goes away. And then if you are interested in it, then you have to pay $2,500 for the academy and th or $2,500 for the coaching and $333 for Alignment Academy. So I'm saving you $611 to be able to change your life you're worthy of being able to invest in yourself, okay? I sure will, Marquita. I will definitely send all of the links over to the email. So once I get that workbook up, I will do that. All right, so I'm gonna come off of the share. I'm gonna stop sharing right now. And for anybody that's still on, I'm gonna open up for questions. You can unmute yourself or uh, go into the chat. But thank you so much. We went about 40 minutes over on a Thursday night, but I pray this is helpful for you. And I pray, I promise you, if even if you do four of these things, you don't even have to do all eight. If you even do four of them, your life will change. Promise you, it absolutely will. How can we contact you personally? You can send me a DM if you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one and then we can connect um, and, and do that for sure. We can, you can email me, you can DM me. We can chitty chat, nasabawa22. Let me put that in here on IG. And then also most of you got an email. You are welcome. Odavo, Cecily, yes. I will absolutely, Jenic, I will email those links out tonight. I'm gonna try to get that workbook up tonight and get that out to y'all. Ah, Shay, yo. And then if you wanna email me, nasabawa at, or nasa at nasabawa.com. And you can email me and we can chitty chat about how we can connect one-on-one -on -one. because the package, if the package in Academy is not right for you, I do do, uh, uh, you can just buy a service. I do acupuncture, Reiki, pressure, acupressure, <laughs> Reiki. And I always start with the higher self reading. Everybody who comes to me first, you always start with the higher self and an ancestor reading. You're welcome. And I will hang out. Is the workbook something we can access? Yep, sure, you absolutely will. I'm going to, uh, if you didn't, um, if you pre-signed on the lead page today, I might not have your email. So just make sure that you sent it. Send it to me, you welcome. And sorry, we went a little bit over guys. I guess next time I'll do this in the afternoon and we'll make it three hours maybe if I do this again. And you guys will have access to the replay as well. If you need to watch this over again. Oh, no, you are amazing. Thank you so much. You welcome. I'm so glad I put my heart into this one. This is one of the best. I felt so good about this workshop because I felt like I, I think I got it. I think I got it. Yes, you are so welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Not and, and so are you. So are you. You all are so powerful. And I'm, I'm you are all my reflection. You are all sent to me and we are all powerful together.
Thank you. Ty will invest it. I will stay on for hours for this. Oh, that's I'm so grateful to hear that. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your time. Ashe, you are welcome, Tasha Lynn. Thank you so much for your time. Time is the most valuable thing on this planet, right? And the fact that you spent almost three hours with me on this call, it shows that you're investing in yourself. And so I hope to see you guys in the coaching package or in Alignment Academy. Thank you, Nasa. Got my sister here with us. Oh, Robin. Oh, hey, sissy. <laughs> hey, Robin, sis. Thank you, D. Thank you. D is a, a one of uh, my new students, and he is so fantastic and just an amazing man. And I'm so glad to be working with men. I'm so happy about that. Jessica, yes. Was Jessica on? Ashe. You welcome, Miss P. You welcome. I'm so glad. I'm so honored for you all. I'm so blessed. I feel so great. I'm going to eat me some high vibrational foods after we get off <laughs> and relax. And I would definitely, and if, um, point blank period, if you do not get an email from me, by, I'm going to try to do it tonight, but by at least 10 a.m. in the morning with this workbook, and even that means that I don't have your email and you may be registered outside of um of my normal booking system so just email me by 10 a.m tomorrow if you don't have those links in that workbook that means i don't have your email address so just shoot me an email and say i didn't get my workbook my ig is nasabawa22 i will put that in the chat nasabawa22 on ig And I do have a per, I have an impersonator on IG. So watch for those two A's because the impersonator has two A's before that 22. So make sure that it's me and it's only N-A-S-A-B-A-W-A-22. No extra A's in there, all right? So copy and paste that so you get the right person. Yes, thank you for the life full. Yes, Ashe, you are welcome. All right, here's the email address again. Nasa at nasabawa.com. <laughs> I love that we have the tribe in here. We have some, I love it. Fantastic. So great. You guys were an amazing. You guys were fantastic. 